and I'm looking for adjustments to the agenda. Thank you, Jamie. I'd like us to move, um, first of all, number six uh, reorganization has to be, um, I suppose it can go behind assigning the timekeeper, but it has to go uh, before the public comment. Um, so I'd like to, to, to move that item six, the whole reorganization piece um, becomes item four. Um, and I would like to move the uh, public comment to item nine. Uh, we had it pointed out to us by uh, um, some of the select board elders in both our towns that um, per open meeting law, public comment is designed to reflect on uh, the items that are on the agenda. It is, and, and it is an opportunity to, for the public to respond to the uh, uh, contents of the meeting. So I think we're going to, I, I think it would therefore be, be uh, appropriate to put public comment um, after uh, item eight as item nine. So that once we've gone through the discussion and the action items, then the public can weigh in. Um, lastly, I would like us to add, um, uh, after, uh, after reorganization, I would like us to add uh, board comment. Board comment was left off uh, uh, the agenda completely. Uh, and then I would also like us to add, um, to uh, rearrange the discussion items order, to begin with the vote, to discuss uh, a building, to, to, to discuss the building situation and follow that with uh, uh, Envision Rochester, the tax anticipation note, the audit and the task force audit uh, update. So we can get and spend our energy first on the, the uh, issues around the vote and our, and our path forward there. I apologize for it being such a, uh, a convoluted uh, uh, a rearranging of the agenda. I just, uh, uh, as, as I was really planning out, you know, how this meeting would go after the vote, wanted to uh, uh, rearrange it that way. Carl, I have um, a question. Who's this? This is Jenny. I have a question. Oh, I, Jenny, just, okay. I, joined, I joined a couple minutes late for and pers purposes of the notes. Could you repeat the adjustments that are prior to moving the public comment to number nine? Um, we if need. I wrote those down, Jenny. I could email those to you if that's helpful. Okay, thanks. Ooh, that's awesome. Thank you, Jamie. Um, uh, Carl just wanted to add, and, and Jamie suggested this should go under what was it? COVID nineteen task force update. I want him to talk briefly about tents. That is absolutely appropriate. Thank you, Ethan. You're welcome. Any other adjustments to the agenda? Hey, Carl, it's Tim Pratt. Uh, Tim, we'll, we'll, we'll get to you in, 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 in public comments unless there is something you really think needs, needs to be added to the agenda. I think, I think we're pretty full for tonight. I think you're pretty full too, and I appreciate you moving that uh, vote up to the top because I think that's the most important thing. But under public comment, can we discuss the building study committee some? We absolutely can. We can discuss. Okay, what, all right, very good. That, since, that's building, good. since the buildings have been added, uh, have been added to the uh, the uh, agenda as a discussion item, that is, um, I, I, I believe Pat Harvey would find that germane. Okay, great. To, uh, Thanks. Top. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Uh, Jamie, you didn't you have an adjustment? What's that? I think I have an adjustment that, that we I, talked about this morning. I think Carl said that I, wasn't I going right after the reorganization call? Right in board in board comment. Yeah. Right. Okay. Under that board was my comment. Question. That would be right. Jamie. That's yep. what I thought. Okay. All right. So I got to still at number three assigning a timekeeper. Usually that has been Ethan. He is very good at that. Okay. Ethan, you accept? I, I accept. What's, um, let me just get some of your write on so I've got my, because um, I don't have this new agenda, so it's going to be a little tricky. Print it out. I just have it on a screen. Um, do we want to do it by block, by section? Yeah, I think. I think the consent agenda is going to take five minutes. Okay. You know, I think I think reorganization will take fifteen at the tops, ten fifteen. Okay. Um. 
Uh, Envision Rochester is a report out, so that's five. I think probably yeah. the vote discussion. Wait, I come before that, don't I? Yes, yes. you do. You're in board. I'm sorry. Board comment. Uh, board comment will be ten minutes. Yeah, um, and the board. Uh, uh, I, believe, I believe so. Yeah, board. I'm just going to sort of write this board comment, and that's ten. I'm going to say ten plus, just in case. Um, yeah. Good. Uh, after board comment is discussion items. Yeah. And uh, I would say uh, 15 minutes to 30 minutes for the vote. Okay. Um, I would say uh, uh, same for the building. Five minutes for Envision Rochester. Probably five minutes for the tax, tax anticipation note. Five minutes for the audit. And probably 10 to 15 for the task force update. Yep, okay. 10, 10 to 15 is good. And I think probably all the action items are just, you know, those are just some, some simple votes. So that could probably be done in 10 minutes. And then- uh, uh, Sorry, uh, you're moving too fast for me. I'm still rewriting things. I'm sorry. Yep, just uh, nine action items are now nine items. Yep, got you. Excellent. Public comment, and I would say let's plan on you know, at least a half hour. Mm -hmm. And no one uh, added an executive session. Mm -hmm. So I think that pretty much does it. Hopefully, though, hopefully adding all that up gets us out of here before midnight. Let's do it. Uh, except Just so you all know, I've been getting the rest of the boards out in under two hours. So, whoa, good. We would appreciate a stern taskmaster, Jamie. Yep. <laughs> All right. And then public half hour. I think I've got that. Five. Let's just check what five is. Uh, go ahead. I'm just sort of catching up here. All right. So we are on to reorganization. We would st I would take motions to elect a chairperson. I move uh, that Carl Gropp be elected chairperson. Second. Discussion. Carl, do you promise to be able to, to communicate with us a little bit more like you have? I will, during the I will, I will do my best. Because what you've done to, during this COVID I, has, been, has been wonderful. You've really been, you've been a better communicator, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, and as I mentioned today, Carl, if if something goes south for you, that you let us know and let your vice know that they are now in charge or something like that. Just so we, we know where the buck stops. We just want to know where the buck stops. That's all. Yes. Point taken, sir. And gotcha. ma'am. <laughs> Although ma'am, see, sir doesn't, sir comes with a... a uh, no, uh, Carl, uh, don't get carried away. We only you're right. Never mind. I'm, I'm not going to start talking about gender roles yes. of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of, 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 of uh, surnames. Please, please. Thank you. Okay. Jane. Before we get going, can we do a roll call for of the public so that I can put them in the notes? Ah, that's what that. We're in the middle of a motion in a second. We're right in the yeah, middle. Yeah, we're in the middle. Yeah, we're right in the middle of a vote here. Yeah, we yeah we can do after. We don't have to do it right now. Any other discussion? All right, I'm going to do a roll call vote. Favor of Carl being um, the ch elected chairperson of the RSUD board. Amy? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Ethan? Aye. Megan? Aye. Janie? Aye. And Carl, I assume you're good to go with this. <laughs> we wouldn't be having this conversation if I wasn't. All right. I hand it over the reins. Congratulations. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. I would entertain uh, 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 nominations for a vice chairperson. I would like to nominate Ethan Bowen. Do I hear a second? I second, Megan. Nomination has been made and seconded to uh, nominate Ethan Bowen. Are there any other nominations? 
Uh, hearing none, discussion? Uh, hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Amy? Aye. Uh, Carl votes aye. Megan? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Oop, Jamie comes before, Janie comes before Jenny. Sorry about getting my alphabet wrong, Janie. Aye. Okay. Uh, and Ethan, uh, I, I skipped you in, in, in order because I'm assuming that, again, you, you would not be entertaining this if, if you weren't okay with it. I'm okay with it. Congratulations, Ethan. You're, uh, you're the RSA uh, uh, vice chair. Vice chair. Um, we, we need to elect a clerk. Um, last year's clerk was, was Jenny. Um, one of the things that there's been some conversation around, and I mention this now because um, it might affect who wants to take the nomination and, and, and where we go with that, um, is that there was some conversation that it was hard for Jenny to fully participate and take accurate notes. And so that in past years, at various times, the board has had um, like one of the office managers, like the Stockbridge office manager has, has done it in, in past years, or the Rochester office manager has done it. We've had someone um, either transcribe a recording of the minutes into written minutes or attend the meeting and take minutes. Um, so I would, you know, in, 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 in efforts to get our board to participate more, I would certainly support as the board going forward that we had someone that was actually taking minutes and the clerk was actually doing the job of certifying the minutes and, and signing the official documents. I don't, I, I, I'm not saying that we're gonna go that way. I'm just saying we can, we can and if that, if that uh, affects who we nominate for this position, I just wanted to make that clear now. So I would entertain nominations for our recording secretary. I, I nominate Jenny, but I agree with you totally. And I'm not sure if we should, or can we pass over this or does it have to be done tonight? We have to, we have to nominate a clerk. We can then go about getting the person to actually take the minutes and just, or transcribe the recordings. Um, how do you feel uh, afterwards? Jenny, I'm how do you okay. feel that? I'm okay either way with, with doing this or later on, if someone else wants to, that's fine, but I'm fine um, continuing with it. Okay. Yes, and we really appreciate the detail. Oh, minute. We you were doing an excellent job. So we definitely, it is not that, I would just understand how hard it is to participate in a meeting and also pay close attention to the minutes, so. Yes, so that I would like to put that to the next meeting even on our yeah, agenda. Yeah, no, that's, Yep. That, we, that we figure that out. And the suggestion I had was maybe we have a rotating uh, crew of people who come to meetings so that no one person has to do it maybe more than every three months or something like that. Right. That, too much to ask. We'll see. But um, that would right. be okay. Well, but, and one of the things that I don't know how accurate this is, we'd have to check with Ray, but I believe that this meet, if you had captions turned on, the captions are recorded to a file somewhere. So that might give, you know, having a transcription file that might need some editing might be a much simpler task than trying to take extemporaneous notes, you know, while participating. As long as we're virtual, that would be great. Yes. Ray? Carl, the, uh, <clears throat> the chats are captured, but not the captions of the meeting. Ah, thank you for correcting me, sir. <laughs> sure. Um, well, let's, should we get back to it then, Jenny? Yes, um, So a motion is made to nominate Jenny. Um, oh. I have not heard a second. Carl. I'm sorry. sorry. This is Ray again. I'm, I'm looking at, at the <clears throat> meeting law fact, and it says statutory requirements, members present, present and active participants. So I don't think you actually need a list of everyone attending, just people who speak. And I'll now be quiet. <laughs> okay. Uh, let the record show that that, that uh, uh, Ray attended the meeting since he's spoken and been an active participant. <laughs> I second Jenny as a uh, clerk with the eye to to um, uh, give those responsibilities to somebody else possibly and have her just be the official signer. Possible, yeah. yeah. Okay. A motion has been made and seconded, and seconded to... Uh, um, uh, have Jenny Austin continue as the uh, clerk of the board, the recording clerk of the board. Uh, do we have any other recording secretary rather? Do we have any other uh, nominations? Hearing none, any other discussion? Amy? Aye. 
Ethan? Aye. Carl says aye. Janie? Aye. Jenny? Hi. Okay. You, you can yourself. I was uh, I, I was skipping uh, Megan. I was I was uh, uh, doing that on the doing the wrong list in my head. Aye. Megan. Aye. Okay. Uh, the motion is passed. Jenny, you uh, are unanimously our recording secretary, um, or uh, our, our uh, clerk. The um, the members we need to appoint to the full board are. Um, one of them is always the president, so we need to appoint, uh, uh, appoint two other members to attend the full board. One of them's always the president. One of them's always the chair. <laughs> um, so I would entertain nominations or, or discussion over who, who should uh, join me at the full board meetings. I will go. Okay. I have no problem staying on, Megan. Okay. So it'll be Carl, Ethan, and Megan at the full uh, uh, SU board meetings. Um now the the chair is also automatically the, the the delegate to the executive board um and we need an alternate for that and a lot of boards use their vice chair to be that as well is that something you're interested in amy or ethan <laughs> you are going to stay on the board aren't you amy yes uh, yeah, it's, uh, yes i'm just we're taking turns uh, okay good enough yes i will be the alternate okay great It'll also keep um, me in touch with you, which is good. Yeah. Yes. So we have a uh, uh, um, we have a, a, a appointed, and I guess we probably should do a formal motion. Um, I would entertain a motion that we appoint myself and Ethan and Megan as the uh, three members to the full board. So moved. Second. Second. Um, okay. Uh, let's go through the vote, Amy. Aye. Ethan. Aye. Carl says aye. Megan. Aye. Janie. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Okay. Um, to appoint myself and uh, Ethan to the executive board, I would entertain a motion to do that. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. Amy. Aye. Ethan. Aye. Megan. Aye. Janie. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Carl says aye. That's a unanimous uh, executive board appointment. We need to appoint a recording secretary since we don't have uh, a candidate in mind yet. That would probably still be Jenny. Is that okay? You'll do that for a while, Jenny. We'll try to find help for you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion to appoint uh, the board's clerk as its recording secretary. So moved. Um, Second. second. <laughs> Motion has been made and seconded to appoint uh, Jenny Austin, the board's clerk, as its recording secretary. Discussion? Hearing none. Amy? Aye. Carl? Aye. Ethan? Aye. Janie? Aye. Jenny? Aye. Megan? Aye. Okay, we've got a recording secretary. Um, appointing a member and an alternate for the... Uh, Actually, let's go through and do the appointments and then, and then approve the slate to try to minimize the voting, voting and get through this faster. Um, the, uh, a, a member and an alternate for signing AP and payroll. I think Janie had been doing that before. Um, is there someone who can, who can do that easily? Amy? I, Amy? Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, Jenny, do you want to be her alternate? Sure. Okay. So we'll appoint Janie and uh, – no, Janie. We'll appoint Amy – and Jenny for the signing of AP and payroll um, negotiations boards. That's traditionally been the, been the chair. So that's me. And then someone as a, a member or alternate, is anyone interested in uh, doing negotiations besides me? Uh, I've got two places. So <laughs> I will, I, I will uh, reach out uh, to the board if I can't make a negotiation session and we'll figure out someone to go in my stand. Tie have, but wait, Carl, doesn't it need to be a, official to, for voting privileges? Ah, that's a good point. Um, so, yeah, we would need someone official. Does anyone want to join me on the negotiating board? Please. I'll do it, Carl. It's Megan. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan. Um, the truant officer, we've traditionally appointed either the superintendent or, or the principal. Um Jamie, are you are you okay with us supporting the the principals, or do you want to have that role for the entire SU? 
No, I'm I'm fine with that. The principal is fine. Um, and is our administration okay with that? That's been your role in the past. Sure. Sure. Okay, so we have a uh, Truett officers, um, newspaper and radio station. It's been uh, Herald and the Valley News for the newspapers, and the radio station has been that one in Royalton and some other radio station that I've forgotten. I think it was WDEV. WDEV, yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll designate that. Um, date, time, and location of regular board meetings. First two days a month. Work for everybody. Yeah. Work for your schedule. Uh, I don't think you heard it, Jamie. Sorry, Carl. I apologize. I was taking some notes. <laughs> that's fine. No, that's fine. The reasoning I was looking to push this one back was to just get a bit, little bit better organized in central office. No, first Tuesday. Right. Right. We just we we've just been meeting on the first Tuesday for a while. No, that's great. Okay. So then uh, uh, the, the time is, is 6.30 p.m. The location is either we alternate between campuses or we meet in the, in, 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 in the internet, depending on the state of our viruses. And then our posting places have traditionally been um, our schools as well as our town halls and our post offices. Is that still okay with everybody? Can we designate... I um, place online so it'd be easier for people, the public, to find um, our agendas online and our meeting. That would be the, that, that that that's a good idea. Let's let's do let's that. Let's, let's let's use the the that that site we were using for the information about the about the uh, Australian ballot that Ray had put together. That's based off the SU. You know, that way we can have the school sites be about just stuff that's happening in each of the campuses. Yes. Yeah. And they can, link, they can link to one place where all the school board stuff is. But, like, right now, the woman from the Mountain Times, when she called me, she couldn't find, she could only, she couldn't find the um, building report on the Rochester side of the website. But I was able to show her how to find it on the Stockbridge side of the website. So I think if, we, if, if going forward... We put our official school board agendas and documents and calendars and and things, you know, on an SU based site where where Ray can just stick it. Ray and Christy can just stick them up there, and you know, it doesn't There's have a to be already created. Right, exactly. It doesn't have to. This 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 doesn't have to be the marketing site that has all the forward facing kid photos and things like this. This is the place that has the strategic plan and you know our uh, our documents about about uh you know things going forward our minutes and, and all that so will it be on that site that ray just developed or is it going to be embedded into where they go to the top they go down to boards minutes and agendas and down to to our side i think it should be i think it should be they should be able to scroll down to our side and go to that as an our side landing page and i think there should be links that you know from each of the school pages when you go to the school board link on rochester or the school board link on stockbridge it should not, you know, duplicate information. It should just link you to this one, you know, uh, RVSU page. Ray, you have a thought? Well, just that uh, the RSA page would point to where the minutes and agendas are now. Right. I, 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 yeah, I don't, I just want us to have a good, clean landing page so people don't have to go to, you know, Yes. Yeah, from that landing page, they can see our minutes. They can see our building study. They can see, you know, our annual report. That that's what I mean about a landing page. Yep. I, I don't. I, I don't. You you don't need to duplicate things right now. I think we've got too much duplication actually. Yep. I don't think there's any simpler place to host it other than what I just put in the chat. Right. right. Thank you, sir. So we have now designated a slate of appointments. I would intend, entertain a motion to approve said slate. Uh, so moved. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the slate of appointments from uh, retorting secretary, uh, AP negotiations board, true and officer, um, no, official notice posting places, school board meetings and posting, pl and posting places. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. I think we have made it through the reorganizing uh, uh, piece of the uh, – Agenda. I know. Carl, just so you know, we are 15 minutes over our time. We lost. Okay. Time. 
Let's very quick. Like a half an hour. Yeah. yeah okay. That? We have uh, we have three minutes listed by Christy. Um, uh, Jenny, are these these are all minutes that we need to be approving? Yes, except I'm not sure um, if the revised 623 will have those minutes, but I don't think Christy had sent them back around. There was just one minor revision. I think she sent them today, didn't she? Okay. If, it, if she sent them today, then I might have missed it. I would entertain a motion to approve the slate of minutes, including the 623 revisions as submitted by Jenny. I so move. Second? Second. Second. Uh, discussion, they look pretty good to me. I did not fine tooth comb them. Uh, hearing no discussion, uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes as present, the slate of minutes as presented with the amended minutes for 623 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The slate carries unanimously. Um, all right, it is now a uh, board, board comment. Okay. Um, as you know, I'm resigning from the board, much, much to my dismay, really. Um, I really have appreciated everybody so much on the board. Your focus on kids, on instruction, um, being open, uh, wanting to do the right thing for our kids has been really enjoyable for me. And I've worked with a lot of school boards, both professionally and, and personally, I've enjoyed you all. Um, Bruce and the AOE from the waiver gave me the opportunity to work with the most at-risk kids in the district. And it is, as you all know, I have made very clear my absolute mission, passion, focus in life. <laughs> and I've been given the opportunity to work with the kids, these kids. And at this time, more than ever, I feel an absolute necessity to be in the thick of this thing because they have lost so much and those have already lost enough. So I am grateful for this opportunity. Whether you all believe it or not, I have really kept my mouth shut because I've been a member of the board and now I don't have to. So you're all the benefit of it. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. we the board board we gave, we, we gave him the rabble rouser. <laughs> um, I think I can safely say on, on behalf of the board that we are so pleased with, with your efforts and your time with us. You have been you have been a guiding voice. You have been a mentor to all of us. The, the, the conversations you gave us around literacy tools and helping to educate us to understand what you were trying to do was, was really priceless. So thank you very, very, very much. Um, the, 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 the board very much uh, respects and honors your service. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to say? Jeannie, I'll miss you crazy. You've been such an inspiration for your passion for education, and I thank you so much for all you, you've brought to the board. Thank you, Megan. Yeah, I, 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 did, you guys. I did have Carl and Megan, um, um, your enthusiasm and, and um, passion for the work, Jamie, is really admirable. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, to all of you. And, you know, your support for me was incredible. I mean, the way you allowed me to present and teach you instruction and wanting to do that and become more knowledgeable in those areas, you know, for a board to have the focus of the kids is really, and the instruction is so important. So thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, Jenny, for everything. I'm not done. Oh, oh you're not. No, no. And, and it's the, not the last time we'll see you because I hope yes. you'll come and present to us and tell us what you're doing and what's going on and keep us totally up to date. Because yes, please. That, that energy that you bring when you present is, is totally a passion that fills us too. So thank you so much. I look forward to more. And maybe we'll finally have lunch now that you're not on the board. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay. Okay. Um, to, make, to, to, to make sure everyone understands, our bylaws... Um, require that we appoint a replacement. Um, we, uh, in the past, when, when this has happened, we've put out a public call, we've put together a, a basic FAQ 
basically we crib documents from the uh, Vermont School Board Associ uh, Association to put together information about what it means to serve on a school board. And I would suggest that we put that same information together. We give it to Ray to put on the uh, the uh, SU uh, uh, on our, uh, our our SUD page so that people can can take a look at that. And we start the discussion on on who's going to replace at the August meeting. Does that sound reasonable to to the board members? I agree. Thank you. We solicit it. We 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 solicit uh, uh, the, the 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 Stockbridge community. Um, okay. Is there any other board comment? Ethan, I saw you yeah. raising your hand before. Yes. Um, uh, I prepared a long speech about this, and now that I um, now that it's actually in the meeting, I and we're already running so late, I'm going to um, uh, curtail a little bit. Um, somebody asked me the other day why I'm doing this, and uh, why I'm going through this, why I'm on this board. And I didn't actually have an answer for them right away. And what it came back to is that when I actually remembered why I did it and is have is for one reason only, and that is to have local control of our education. And you can say, well, there's so many things we're not in control of. But the fact is, we have say we brought in these administrators, we took over and we've really done a great job of turning these schools around. That said, I don't think there's any way our schools can survive without this merger. And I may be, you could debate that. You could say, oh, no, no, no. But the fact is, I think we need this merger. I think we need each other because I think the state would love to dissipate these small schools. And so because of that, I really believe that it's time to put away our anger, to put away finger pointing, to put away this and that and who said, and, and to make some very clear decisions. And because of that, I am now in favor of um, taking the high school building out of consideration as an educational space for our school. I think it, it, it's become a huge distraction to our primary focus, which is educating our children to the point where our budget got voted down if not exclusively about that issue, primarily about that issue. I think we need to be in one building. I think um, we know that building, it's, it, it, uh, we know its risks, we know what could happen. I think COVID also gives us a great opportunity because of that to, uh, I hate to say that COVID gives us an opportunity because that's a horrible thing to say, but with the outside education we're thinking about with this tent education, things like that, it allows us to be outside that. Um, I'm going to bring a motion to this effect when we get into the building area. Um, we'll see what the board's pleasure is on this. Um, I will, uh, but I am at that point because I think we need to be partners. And I feel like it's been a marriage where there's been a boyfriend next door all the time. And that isn't terribly distracting. And I think we need to move forward. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh... That 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 was an interesting closing metaphor. Um, thank yes. you, <laughs> thank you for I I you know it, 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 I did I always appreciate the, the the way you can turn a phrase, sir. <laughs> um, is there any other board comment? Um, hi, it's Megan. Um, I I just want to say I am disappointed in our the outcome of our school budget vote. Um, I definitely want to hear from our community members from both towns. Um, I do think that I am hopeful that we can resolve our differences so we can move forward and actually educate our kids, especially during these very challenging times. Um, I have some hesitation with moving so fast, but I'd like to see how this discussion goes about the buildings. Thank you. Amy? Oh, okay. I saw your microphone pop on, and I didn't. I, I didn't know if you had something to say. Um, is there any other board comment? Okay, um, then we are going to uh, uh, move into discussion items, and the first discussion item is the uh, six thirty vote. Um, I think we're all pretty aware of uh, uh, of the way that that vote went. Um, I wanted to begin to clarify a few things about just where we where we are and where we stand statutorily um it's vermont law that 
um, any any municipal vote that doesn't involve the election of of an official. So they could not reconsider the election of me or Megan, for example. But five percent of the uh, voters in a particular town or district. So in this case, five percent of the voters in, in Rochester and Stockbridge that are part of the RSUD district could bring a motion to reconsider the vote uh, within 30 days. If that happened, the vote would be uh, voted again, same term, same conditions. You wouldn't be able to alter the budget or alter the article. You'd be revoting the same article. I confirmed this with Dina, our, our attorney. I have not heard on the Stockbridge side of any of any community group that is, is, is trying to put um, a, a, a reconsideration vote a petition together. And I'm assuming that since I haven't heard anything on the Rochester side, there's probably not a, a, a community effort to, to, to putting one of those forward uh, in that case or, or, or on that side of the, the uh, uh, district as well. Traditionally, boards, when their budgets have, voted, have been voted down, like when Stockbridge's budget got voted down a, a few years back for us going a few hundred bucks into the penalty, um, What's happened is the board has gone and rewarned an additional vote. As you know, the law says we have 87% 80 of the budget um, until we pass a budget. Um, and as we, we, we presented in our presentation, we really don't have a clear path, path forward to function as a reasonable school on that 87% uh, 87 uh, uh, limit. I don't believe... I have not heard anything from uh, Lindy and Bonnie, and to be fair, I have not even asked them to try to produce produce a uh, a blueprint of what our education would look like with with eighty seven percent funding. Um, you know, so what we can Carl, do. Can I add real quick? Sorry to interrupt. Sure. I think it's important that the public understands that we have the the actual legislation is that we have the ability to borrow up to eighty seven percent of the current budget. Correct. That's that, that's actually that's actually a, a very good technical point, because it means, um, you know, that that we could we could try to play we you know we could we could try to, you know, play a chicken scenario where we take the eighty seven percent and we figure we've got till eighty seven percent of the school year or thereabouts is over to get a budget passed and just keep just keep going forward. Um, the other piece of the equation is that when a budget is voted down, um, there's RIF language in the uh, teacher's contract that allows, you know, we were, we, we had issued um, teaching contracts or, or uh, offers of contracts um, to our entire teaching staff um, at the March date, as we've often done, because we have a budget that uh, came in under the penalty that would employ all, all the teachers we were using. And, you know, we, we, we had a path forward that our, our administration, uh, you know, and, and our board agreed with. Um, when the budget, when when uh, COVID hit, we could not, we did not have the opportunity or the ability to change the budget or submit different figures or change the, I'm sorry, we could change the budget. We could not change the employment offers that had been made because the budget had not yet been voted down. Now that a budget has been voted down, we do have the opportunity to, to, to uh, lay people off. I do not believe, given that the budget that, and this is my personal opinion, this is not me speaking uh, uh, as the moderator or as the chair, I do not believe that, you know, our administration, you know, our administration gave us a budget that was dollars, you know, it was less dollars than we spent the year before. So I do not believe that they gave us a budget that has, you know, again, space for layoffs. So I think as we talk about the conversation, uh, about the vote going forward, we need to talk about how to make a budget that is going to be palatable to our communities. Um, you know, recognizing that the budget we put forth did not have uh, a, a decent amount of extra uh, extra programming. So, in that sense, you know, the board needs to consider uh, a, a, you know a proposal like Ethan made, in the sense that. I don't believe that we could produce a budget that would be academically sec successful for our children that cut a significant amount of money out of the budget to, for example, Z, you know, to, to, to cut enough to, to, to compensate for whatever it, it costs to keep um, parts of the high school open. But 
this is the discussion that that we as a board need to have now because we have if we wanted to recall that in may we discussed do we want to have a vote before the end of the fiscal year which we ended up deciding to do or do we want to pay, do do we want to follow the, the lead that granville and hancock are taking for example which was to piggyback our budget vote on the um august primary which is the 11th for us to piggyback our our uh, revote of our budget on the uh 8 11 vote we need to have a warned uh, a warning approved by the board by the 11th of, of of july to get outside that 30 day window so i think you know i i, I revote um carl i'm not certain that we need to stay within the 30 day now for for a for a consideration revote or for a for a, a, a if we warned a new vote per dina we'd have to warn it 30 days out and so if we wanted to alter the budget or if we wanted to alter the budget right right and to do a reconsideration so, vote we'd have to get five percent of the electorate to sign on so wait a second. so if we did not want to alter the budget does do, do we still fall under that 30 days as well it's the same no how many days my understanding is no and carl i would need to check the contract language again i just i i'm not certain that a voted down budget in your current contract would allow you to reduce and force at this point in time i don't see i haven't seen that language i can review it again when i've been dealing with yeah. um, it, 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 it has been in there in the past um, I know because there was brought, I mean, and this was certainly before the Windsor Northwest, uh, orange Windsor merger. So it may have been, it may have been, uh, I'm pretty certain that's been removed just so folks yeah. know. So, so then, uh, th th that makes our situation, uh, 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 more complicated. We, we would have to save that money without laying off staff. That's correct. And I know that's correct. Cause I've been, I've been handling this with another district. So if we did not alter the say, amount, yeah. if you did, if we did not alter the amount of our budget, when does that? What is the warning time frame for that? If we put the same budget out for vote, Dara, do you recall this when we were just dealing with this with F Bud? Tara, I thought it was ten days, but now I'm going to have to go back that's and. Check we got to go back and look. Ten days is what I'm recalling as well. So that's two of us recalling the same number. But. I think it's I think it's you have 30 days to get the uh, five percent voter petition to reconsider, and then you after that you have you 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 can uh, schedule a vote. You know, it, it needs to be at least 10 days after that that reconsideration petition has been certified. I know that you have 30 days to certify reconsideration and then i think the vote once reconsideration has been certified the vote can happen as soon as 10 days after that well, okay so yeah so where do we go yeah at this point what what do we do well we can we need to make a call do we we can we can do one of two things um first of all we need to we need to decide if we as a board can, for example, act on, on your proposal or your idea, Ethan. Mm -hmm. can, can we as a board, um, you know, without our administration, um, you know, keeling over, uh, you know, well, that's so we say that we can, we, we're, we're not going to use the high school building for an educational pur purpose um, before school starts or before we have to turn the furnace on? Well, the, the, the question is, I mean, my sense, and this is hopefully what we'll get feedback on in public comment, my sense is that that was more of an issue than the numbers we put out. The only number that was a contentious one was the, re, was the heat for that high building being in the right. budget again. Right, and, which and, of, and of course, add to that maintenance for the building, all these other parts of the building that take on. So, so, so that heat was... 0.9% of the total budget. It was less than a full percent of our t of the total budget to heat. So I don't think I got the impression that the number of our budget is not particularly the issue. Okay. And yeah, no, I, and I, 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 I certainly got a, a, a similar opinion. Um, 
the big piece that I would say about whether we not we we, we would need to think about whether we not whether or not we needed to adjust the budget would be for if for example we're going to uh, uh, be be turning the 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 some some version of the the gym space in the in the elementary school into a multi purpose space we don't have money in our budget currently for you know partitions or cabinets or carts or whatever it is we might put in there so the question is would we you know are, are we as a board comfortable with saying fine we're going to just put the budget back forward and understand that we're going to be under in some of these areas that we had in the budget because we're not going to suddenly be spending that money. So we'll be under in the categories of maintenance for the high school buildings, but we'll be over in the categories for purchasing uh, classroom supplies and, you know, art tables and, 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 and so on and so forth. And, and I, don't, I don't really agree with that model. I, I'm wondering if it's time to approach the um, select board to discuss the possibility with the Rochester select boards of the possibilities with them purchasing our high school building with the option to discuss continued current use. That is an option. Um, I, I, I think it muddies, I think it muddies the water personally. I think right now we need some sort of clean decision to get our budget passed. Well, I don't um, think losing very, programming is the right thing to do. What's that? I don't think losing programming is the right thing to do. Um, we're not losing programming. We're not losing teachers. Um, I, 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 uh, I, I don't think, a, and I, Stockbridge has proven this, that, that it's not the spaces that make the programs. It's, 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 it's the teachers, it's the tools. Um, we're going off anyway. I, I think we need to, I don't, I think we need to move for it and see what can happen. And I, I agree with, I agree with Ethan in that I don't think space equals programming. Yeah. I, I'm going to, I, oh, go ahead, Jenny. Jenny. Nope, she's oh. off. Go okay. ahead, Megan. I think that was Megan. Okay. Um, I, 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 I am hesitant to move this quickly on the buildings, and it's just, I mean, I'm, I'm all for trying to get them back to the town, and I, I, I'm very reluctant to be okay with not having the option down the road after this one year of COVID hopefully is done about not spending money retrofitting the, the gym into a multi-purpose room and looking to Rochester, the town, to utilize a space that is already there. People in this town years ago took value in having a dedicated music and art space. And I understand that doesn't mean doesn't make the program, but it does give kids a different sense. I would just like to have the option to have that as like at least a discussion before we say, okay, that's it. Where I mean, I understand that muddy in the waters, but I just, I just, I really am hesitant on that. I hear you. I, uh, I, I'm, I, I feel that. Um, we need to look to the health of our merger because if, if, if we don't look to the health of our merger, we threaten the existence of these schools. I think it's been very clear, made very clear to us that these options, this, you know, keep our options open is not, and I'm, you know, uh, I feel a little crazy because I'm the Rochester representative saying this and I'm a little sort of surprised where's, you know, excuse me, Carl and Jenny and, and Janie before, but I mean, clearly 114 people. Um, and, and we can't just say that because a few people put out the vote that that's, you know, that said, put out the word that that's why these people, people feel like they're, we're not listening to them. And I, I think personally, we've had some time and we've made a bit of a mish, mash of it. And you can say whatever you want about that, but I, I think it's time to just move on. I think by repurposing the gym, you are losing programming in the gym. We had two basketball teams. I know this winter is going to be different because of COVID and we really don't know what the future is going to hold, but you've now... If by repurposing that 
the gym, you've now lost that programming. You've lost extra extracurricular activities in that gym. You've lost. Mm -hmm. I, I hear you. I, hear I, I, I think, I think there's, there's a, you know, and, and, and I don't know, I'm not the person that uh, understands what makes a good, you know, in good in, in instructional space and all that. I mean, I, I think that there's ways that um, you could probably put things into, into rolling cabinets and carts and be able to, you know, still keep that gym as a space rather than, so in other words, um, making it into a multi-purpose space versus chopping it up and making it into a purpose-built art classroom, a purpose-built cafeteria and a purpose-built uh, music room. Um, as far as Megan's point about um, gaining the space back or whatever, I think that if we made a commitment to get educational programming out of that building, we couldn't go back on that without talking back to the town again. Well, but we didn't. But, well, we never made that commitment. We're not giving, we're not, I mean, I think what, what I hear Ethan saying is not we're, you know, it's forever and ever, amen. It's saying we're going to go, you know, we will not use that building for educational purposes um, anymore. And if the experiment doesn't work, we can always go back to the townspeople and say, you know what, this didn't well, work. I mean, the, the, more, I, the, I more likely, the more likely scenario um, that might happen is that suddenly the boiler dies um, because, you know, it's going to be a big deal to get um, the elementary school refitted so that it's not, waiting for it all to fall apart. Um, uh, all of this, I understand. I understand all of this. And believe me, I've gone through it in my own head, what we're losing. I'm a theater person, <laughs> you know? But the fact right. is, was made that we haven't used the, the auditorium that much. And yet we kept it heated. The heat was pumping out of that place every time. And I talked about it because the maintenance people didn't understand how to really heat that building because it's an archaic heating system. And I just think we need this for the merger. We need it, it, we need it for the merger. And I understand losing program and I'll understand all these things. I do, but I just think I'm thinking bigger picture. I'm thinking long-term and I'm thinking about, I believe I'm thinking about the kids. Well, getting rid of the building was not part of the merger. Getting rid of our high school was, which we did. We don't have a high school anymore. We don't have a middle school anymore. We got rid I, of them. That is what was part of the merger. I, I, that's, around the building. That's, that's past history for me. I'm saying okay, we're well, in the middle of two building, a two building conflict that's dragged on and dragged on for whatever reasons. Right. And if and if tonight isn't the night that you know we get enough agreement, that's fine. I'm going to bring this back, but I just no, I, I think believe this, it's time to move on. This is a healthy discussion that we are having right now, yeah. and it's, it's it's the right time to have it. Um, I am very concerned. I, I understand the multi-purpose room works well for Stockbridge. That is wonderful. They have less than half the population of Rochester. Mm -hmm. we have more than twice as many kids as them having to filter them through uh, PE, art, music, and lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, and we are already losing programming because we don't have enough space. We're going to potentially have to reduce our preschool programming because there's not enough space. Mm -hmm. That weighs heavy on me. I hear you. One comment I would. I'd like to bring up about the auditorium. I know one of the concerts last year was going to be combined upper grade concert at the auditorium. However, the auditorium is not accessible and not, um, not all students can access that. And that's another cost that um, I think logistically and legally would need to be accessible. The Rochester Auditorium is not ADA? Not to my understanding. Uh, there was a not, lift. Not, no, not in the stage. I believe there's a there was a lift and the lift um, got taken out with Irene and I don't believe it's been replaced. Ah, right. it's not the auditorium; it's access to the stage. Yeah, it's ah. access to the stage, and there was a lift right. that used to be there, but I believe after Irene, it was not replaced for whatever reason. Okay, I'd like no. to just yeah, a, um, if I could, Megan, um, I. We're talking about the auditorium. The auditorium. We are really yeah. have been the youth has been primarily the art and the music room, in which are on the same exact heating zone. So we're focusing like, oh, we didn't use this, but those kids 
use that art and music room weekly. And I just, I'm really hesitant to, I'm, I'm not saying, because we are going forward with COVID and we have to, we're going to be in classrooms this year and it's a good trial period. I just am really unsettled by the fact that we haven't talked to administrators about how this will work going forward after this year. I am, I, I just don't, I don't like the language where if this building gets sold back to the town that we cannot have that conversation. Um, I am hesitant because and I, and I have, I want this merger to work. I'm like, I have been on doing this for many years at this point, like all of us, but there is sentiment in Stockbridge that I have seen on social media that has implications that they would like to dissolve this. And I don't know how widespread that is, but it makes me really concerned that we're making decisions that we might, that, that, that partner might not be down there. And I don't want that to be, but I am just very hesitant to make a black, a, a line in the sand about this. I just, I, I really am. And I mean, moving forward with looking at the town purchasing the whole building and renting the space back to us for a portion of of what we're paying now would which would be much less and it would really get the, the building off of our off of our books and we could just run portions back that we decide to use as programming needs. I my to concern keep that conversation open. I, I hear you. My concern is that um, with this Envision Rochester um, and maybe they'll inform us tonight. I mean the amount of money that they're going to need right away to keep heat on, to keep uh, maintenance going, to keep somebody taking care of the building, because my plan would be that, you know, we would be done. Um, uh, that's a significant sum. And I haven't, I've heard a lot of talk, but I have not heard dollar amounts that they have an account ready to take this on. And so my concern is, is that it, 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 it ends up as a drag on the school because we're the one with the maintenance and we're the one with the fuel contracts and we're the ones with the town with the tanks a couple um, yep a, a couple things i wanted to, to 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 put in there to make sure everyone understands about the whole uh, uh transferring the building to the town it is only the town of rochester that has the right of first refusal on the rochester buildings um meaning that uh the school board um and, and, and that $1 price also includes assuming all the encumbrances on the building. So that would mean uh, like a whatever portion of the, that, that bond that was for replacing the, the high school roof or whatever would, would travel would travel with that building. Um, so there's, there's, it's, it's only a, it's, 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 it's a dollar plus whatever encumbrances are on the building um, or uh, equipment. Um, if the town divests of the building within five years, the town has to pay for any work that the, the school had done over the last few years. So the town of Rochester would need to be, if, if they wanted to assume that, they could assume it for a dollar and lease it out to Envision Rochester for whatever whatever the town wanted to do. But it would be, it would be you know, the, the, the town would be needing to make a commitment um, you know, to, to, to being the landlord and to assuming that as a, as, as a municipal space, that then they were, were, were releasing or developing occupancy ar arrangements with the, um, the, the, the whatever nonprofit might want to use that. And that could also be leasing back, back to the schools. I've asked Dina, I've not gotten a clear answer from her, if there's any kind of statutory rules about um, using spaces in a public building for, 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 for elementary education? Would there have to be locked doors between where the kids were and where whatever Envision Rochester might be doing with a yoga studio or whatever else? I don't know. But I mean, I, I, I think it's important to, to stay focused on, you know, that we as a school board have, have an assumption around that building. And it's also important to understand that if we agree that we're not going to do educational things in that building, it's still our building. We're just we're just saying that we're going to try to shut it down as much as possible. We're going to, we're going to drain the pipes. We're going to do you know the the the, the things to, to to seriously mothball it um, versus you know saying okay this is the you know we we've now blown our shot. We'll never ever have that building again. 
we don't have we we won't necessarily have access to it. I think part of what I, at least what I'm hearing from Ethan and correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but you're saying you know close that building completely, don't heat any of it to to to, to give you know operate in the one building while we still figure out what we as a district do to responsibly handle that asset to the town of Rochester or to a nonprofit in Rochester or or, or, or to whatever else. I don't think I, I I don't think that we're we're saying let's just walk away and bulldoze it. Correct. I, I I'm you know there are huge ramifications of what I'm putting out here. I understand that I'm pushing I'm pushing us toward some sort of decision. Uh, uh, there are very different options. As I say, I don't see the money in Envision Rochester to be able to jump in and take over this building as we've been talking about it. It's it's the town of Rochester. It's not Envision well, Rochester. And I don't. And, we and don't it's only forty thousand. It's only forty thousand dollars right now of of heating costs uh, and electricity costs and and why not even explore that with them to see if uh, what, what, you can't know unless we ask. But I want to, I wanted us to to agree about the continue the potential discussion for continued use. Maybe as we continue to discuss it, it 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 isn't feasible. We have a better way to do it because we have tents, we have other things to do. But I don't think it should be part of if we're going to talk to the select board about taking the about taking over possession of the rochester high school with the possibility to discuss options for continued use carl do you know what what sort of level of magnitude the bonds would be that would be transferred to the town that they would be responsible for for the last five years updates i know you won't know on the top of your head but do we have a ballpark the, amount? One, the total the total bonds that are out on the rochester campus are around 60 grand 55 does that sound right tara and i believe the majority of that work is tied to the high school you and, give me just a few minutes i can look it up I believe that the um, bonds will be paid off in 2022, right? I think one of them is. I think there's there's one 2022 and one 2024. I thought there were two of them. In any case, what I'd like to do while Tara's looking at that information, and you know, while the board has been back and forth, um, we are also we're also getting to our full time. Right. We have not we have not yet heard from either Lindy or Bonnie on this. I think hearing hearing their thoughts and 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 what they think about, uh, you know. If the board said we're doing this, what would they say? Would you know? So, Bonnie or Lindy, do you have any any uh, preliminary thoughts? I think uh, I feel really torn because I don't think this is a snap our fingers decision. I appreciate what Ethan's trying to push us towards, but I feel like there's a lot of steps, maybe steps we should have taken before a failed budget vote um, to do. I think what and I'm going to back up and say we need to like pound the pavement and have conversations with voters and hear what they really think. And if there's three options, because that's what I heard, one is to just shut the high school building down completely. That's going to cost money. Um, I also heard, you know, go to the town, see what the, the town of Rochester, see what the town of Rochester is thinking. And then also go to the town and see if we can access that space back. That takes some time. Um, and I know we're feeling a little bit of a time crunch because we're maybe toying with the idea of being ready to present again for an August 11th vote. But I, I'm worried that we're rushing so quick, we're missing things. And I think we're rushing because we didn't push ourselves to have these discussions before now, is my honest thought. And I just don't know that it's, while those spaces and Bonnie, correct me if I'm wrong, while those spaces may not be used this fall because of the way COVID has shifted, you know, our thoughts around how education is going to have to happen for our kiddos face to face. Um, it's a big ask to, it's not impossible, but it's a big ask to automatically use a space that's only used for two things, for four things, and how that's going to work and the functionality of that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to really ask myself and I feel, um, I knew this was gonna come up, but I still don't have a good answer about uh, if we shut 
if we shut down a building, is that what's best for kids? But I do also agree with the fact it's the big chunk of change for a space that we're not using the best possible way for its educational value. So that's not really an answer, but those are just my thoughts. So I, um, I agree with much of what Lindy has said. Um, my thoughts really uh, haven't changed a lot since the other couple of times that folks had asked, um, what would the impact be if we were to uh, house our, our program completely in the elementary school? I do appreciate Ethan trying to move us towards a resolution because I think a resolution, we can't carry the costs, so much of the cost of a building that we're not using for educational program. That being said, there would be significant loss of opportunity to run to other kiddos if we, um, if we completely took all the uses and tried to put them into that one gym. The gym is not a multi-purpose room, it's a gym. And we'd have to do some, some work in there to do that. There's another level that we'd have to think about. Um, and this is where the expertise really needs to come in. The wiring closet for our entire network is in the high school. The brains of our entire phone system is in the high school. So we have to find physical space to bring those systems into the elementary school. Um, I, I, you know, the job that Lindy and I have is to implement the decisions that the board makes. And you will never hear either one of us say we're not going to implement decisions that you've made. But I can't sit here in all honesty and say that there would not be a significant loss of opportunity for Rochester kids for us to do this. Um, this is Mary Rochester or Rochester and Starbridge? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that if it was for me. You referred to Rochester kids. You didn't refer to Rochester and Stockbridge. Well, I don't think there would be a loss of opportunity for Stockbridge kiddos. Public speak. All right, um, so Bonnie. I yes. understand. I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate that. You know the, that. Uh, Oh, you, you, um, I guess my, my, my question would be when you say they're, they're, I guess what I'm, what I'm curious about is Lindy made a comment earlier that, um, you know, okay, we might not be using those spaces in the fall. Correct. Um, and that maybe we might be coming back to them. We might be coming back to them later. Um, I guess what I what I'm wondering about would be how we're intending to do that. I mean, so the the, the gym's a gym and it's not a, not a multi purpose room, but we're going to do art. Where I, and I understand that music in general is just being canceled because singing is the fastest way to spew viruses in a sphere in front of your mouth hole. Correct. Um, Correct. But I so I mean. So the music room is going to be is going to not be used in the fall, no matter what. Pretty much, the art room. I mean, what are the what are the plans to 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 to, to replace having access to that art room uh, under the COVID nineteen uh, situation? For this year, Carl, and and I'm sorry, I should have restated what Lindy said. For this year, the impact um, is nowhere near as significant because we aren't going to be able to take youngsters into those spaces. So the issues we'd have to deal with this year would be the wiring closet, the, the, the brains for the phone system. We'd have to find rooms to locate those systems into. In terms of programming for this year, the impact is um, far less than it. It's probably almost negligible, to be, to be bluntly honest, because we are going to have to hold those classes in classrooms. So this, is, this is year coming up is not the huge impact. Okay. I, the the but what our board needs to be thinking about is not yes next year, but we need to be thinking five years and ten years from now. Sure. And I, I don't I don't know that that you know, but if we have an opportunity to do a one year experiment to see what it looks like in that building, and say we're going to try to move into that building, and we're going to see, we know that this year is the perfect year to try it. And can we figure out what accommodations we need to make to move this forward? Because at the same time, 
you know, it certainly also gives us the year to work with figuring out what Envision Rochester or the town of Rochester might do. It gives us the year to, uh, you know, to, 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 to continue the community conversations for other, you know, for, for other particular aspects, whether or not um, the SU might have some use for some of that space, whether or not there might be, uh, uh, you know, additional uh, SPED programming or, 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 or something else that, that, that could be put into that space. I think that, you know, I mean, I guess my, my question is, if we're not going to be able to use that space for next year, what, why are we saying we should still heat it and, and, and keep it available? And why not say we're not going to use it for a year and let's pass our budget and see if we can function and figure out our plans going forward. I, 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 I to me, that seems like, you know, a, 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 a way forward that addresses Ethan's issues and, and yours as well, Amy, do you have thoughts? So at this point, you're not feeling um, we, that we are ready to approach the select board about uh, purchasing the building then. You still are looking- I mean, Now in July 11th, if we, wanted to be on, if we wanted to have the August 11th vote. What would be on the vote? What do you mean? Well, if, just, if we said, if we, if we warned a revote of our budget and made it clear, you know, in our conversations to the townspeople that we hear them, we're shutting this building for at least the next year going forward, and we're going to work aggressively to have a plan to uh, uh, move forward with either the town of Rochester, um, you know, and, and, and a rent back agreement, or you know, uh, uh, making some making some serious decisions to move this forward. That we're not just hitting pause for one year, but that we're we're saying we know we're not going to need it for this year, and let's try to let's 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 take that off the equation uh, off the table for at least a year. And try to sort things out to have a good way going forward. You know, the the the, the question is, and I think personally that that you know, if we made a statement like that and, and schedule a revote, there might be you know, we we might get a lot more community support because they've been heard for closing the building for at least this year coming forward. They hear that we're developing a long term plan that includes working with the town of Rochester. Um, you know, to, 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 to sort out, to sort out what to do about that high school building. And, you know, we, the, the, for me, the biggest piece would just be that it would be figuring out how to, we probably have to have some outside person. I don't want Bonnie and Lindy to figure out how to, how to drain the pipes and, and really mothball that building. We'd have to bring someone in, some engineer guy in to, to really mothball that building for the year and drain the pipes. Um, you know, we need to figure out, uh, I, you know, the, I mean, we'd have to give them funds to get the supplies that they needed out of that, you know, out of those spaces into the main building. And we would probably need, again, to, to, to buy storage units that we can move some of these things around. Because if we're doing art in classrooms anyways, there needs to be, you know, Rochester has not had art on a cart or anything similar to that. So there's going to need to be supplies purchased to allow Rochester to have art at all. So I think, you know... Well, I, if I could just add, I think for a year, we're going to be okay. We, we knew three months ago we were going to have to move into classrooms with art and music. And we haven't identified uh, huge needs to purchase equipment and materials. There's some. We do have to have some small stuff. But I'm, um, what I was trying to address was the more long-term long issue. And um, shuttering the building um I, and thank you very much for for saying that you didn't see lindy and i being able to do that because i think i think both towns would be in a bad place if you let us close the building um i i, I think the the bigger issue with me for me for next year based on what i'm hearing is that we have the technical expertise to be able to do that because to be frank i don't know if it costs five hundred dollars or five thousand dollars to pay somebody to relocate uh the wiring closet I don't know what it costs to relocate the the brains of the phone system. Is it is it does it make sense to do it as part of this one year experiment or doesn't it? Um, the other thing I will add is that we probably, based on some conversation I had a year and a half ago with contractors, we would need that level of expertise. We would also need um, probably Tara to get involved in this because each of the contractors I spoke with brought up the notion that. If you shutter a building, your insurance status changes, your fire, whatever it is, changes. I, I'm really out of my element here. 
I just know there's a fair amount of stuff that has to be checked off if we're going to close the building. Sure. Uh, that's, that's, that, that's understood. I do not expect you to be able to produce to me a, a, a two-page executive summary of how this is all going to happen. Carl, Carl can I just say something? Um, I, I was, Ray was going to jump in and say something about, I think, the, oh, the technology. Oh, sorry. Forgive me. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to mention, along with what Bonnie's saying, that, that there will be unknowns about the fire control systems for the building, the security cameras, and the door controllers, along the same lines of what she's talking about specifically about the phone system. So, but do you, do you, do you know our network closet, Ray? Have you been there? Do you know what she's talking about? I mean, I have no idea if our phone system is, is, is an old, you know, key PBX. Is it, is it, you know, I have no idea what, what we're talking about in terms of, is this keeping a server room heated or is this, you know, something more complicated than that? Right. So um, I have less concerns about the network side, although I don't know it as, as well as I would like. But it's the other parts that I do not know about. The fire control system, the phone, secure, uh, the door controllers. Those all run out of the room in the upstairs uh, in the attic of the high school building. So this list is getting quite long already on for the cost of, of just doing you know status quo. But of course, it won't be. It'll, the heat will be shut down in the building if we're not using it for this year. Um, it, but to completely shutter it and shut it off sounds like it might actually end up costing us more than than just kind of. Uh, well, this is. Add if I can follow on you, Amy, and this is a question to Bonnie: Were you thinking because they weren't going to be in music or in art um, that the whole building would go to the fifty-five? and stay there for the year? Uh, yes, Here, here's the issue, Ethan, and this is why you can feel heat sometimes pumping out when you're over there. I think it's called pneumatics. I'm way out of my element here, but the temperature control system in the building is, is extremely old. There's only two people in the state of Vermont, I'm told, that still work on that system. So you can set it to 55, and then in seven or eight days later, you can go back and it's putting heat out at a higher temperature so they have to all be reset again. It, it, gotcha. It's just really an old system that is hard to control. But yes, that was the plan. Okay, thank you. I'd, I'd, I'd had a I'd conversation, like have, I'd had a conversation with Carrie. I'd had a conversation with Carrie McDonald about uh, after school program uh, needing to move into the uh, gymnasium. Um, Bonnie, one other question. Uh, what about use of the library? Because um, I understand right now that, I mean, we have talked about this, that right now I think that room is actually locked. And if um, the the art librarian is going to be going down to Stockbridge, does that present um, a possible space that could be reconfigured and rethought, at least for this year, moving some books and moving some shelves uh, might be easier than actually rethinking the, uh, the use of uh, full use of the gym. Ethan, I don't. Un I'm not sure I understand your question. You mean the library in the elementary building? Yes, correct. So what are you asking me about that room? Um, uh, can it be used for more than it is right now? Um, yes. I yes. Yes. And, it can and, be. And that, is that part of the plan for this year when we need, especially? It is one of the biggest spaces in that Rochester Elementary School after the gym. Um, yeah, we're not certain just yet uh, how we need to use it. One of the things we know is that we have some um, interventionists that are not going to be able to work in their offices because their offices are too small. And uh, you could possibly get a couple of six foot tables in the library and a teacher could sit on one end and a child receiving intervention could sit on the other. So, yes, we are thinking about the different ways we can use that room. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. And the gym, just to be clear, there is no plan for using the gym moving forward because the recommendation is uh, that we not bring groups of children in, into gymnasiums for PE and that youngsters eat in their classrooms. So for this year, there's a minimal impact on what we're talking about doing. There is a significant impact if we move forward to more normal times. I'd like to make a comment going back to what Carl says about his experiment. I think that, uh, especially considering what's going on with the classrooms, I think that this would be the perfect time to do something like that. I don't think that we can drop the high school in day one 
um, there's just so many things, you know, to to go through that everybody's been talking about. And I don't see how else we can move forward, honestly, without we, I think we're starting to get to the point where we're spinning around in circles here. And I would also like to make the comment um, towards what Bonnie was saying earlier about the, I think it was the art and the music room, a little bothered that, that Bonnie acknowledges that the benefits um, are lower to Stockbridge than Rochester when we're trying to trying to be equal here. Je Jenny, I'm sorry if I misspoke. What I was trying to say is if we eliminated those rooms long term, it would result in less opportunities for Rochester kids. That that's what I was trying to say. I'm sorry if that's not no, what exactly. I said. Exactly. That's the same thing, Bonnie. You're just saying Rochester. Yeah, but there's other opportunities in Stockbridge that Rochester kids don't have. The the civics class and other things. Okay, we can't we can't go here. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to explain. Yeah, I just, I think no, we, that's, I, that's it. That's the point. I, no, no, no. You can't. And I'm sorry. There's no time for public comment right now. You have to hold it. I no. know. It's just getting frustrating to listen to well, this right now. Well, then, then you need to either leave and come back or just hold your peace because it's just not acceptable. That's not the way we run a meeting where people, somebody he can jump in. He is correct. Um, so... I do agree with Jenny that uh, that 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 we've been uh, going uh, around and around in this, and I think that we need to 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 to, to come to you know to come sort of the board needs to come to some sort of conclusion about what we're going to do so we can properly advise yeah. our administration on uh, uh, what their uh, uh, what their marching orders are what what we would like them to 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 accomplish uh, for our kids. Um, do we feel, um, well, I think let's start with Ethan. You had talked about uh, uh, you, you, you were going to be making a motion. Oh, you know, this can I just jump in quick? Oh, yeah, sure. Go Sorry, I mean, I just, I think, you know, my, my, just so folks get a sense of me, I believe the supervisory union should be in charge of best supporting schools and the boards to carry out their visioning that's in alignment with the greater outcomes we want for kids within the SU. So I think we're a service organization. So what I would say is if you choose to remove students from the high school, that is fine. And then what I would not want my principals running around trying to figure out for you what that means as far as technology and things, I would take that on. And as the SU, we would look at having a plan for you later in September in regards to what made sense around being the most efficient and cost effective for you in the upcoming year while you're also working toward what is the longer term goals. So if you were going to shut the building down for this year, we would be able to come to you by your September meeting and say, this is the plan that's most cost effective that we would move forward with. Just, I wanted to put that out there that we would take that on. Okay. I um, would, I guess, go back to what I said before, and I would think that we should approach the Rochester Select Board to discuss the possibilities of purchasing our high, purchasing our high school building with the option to discuss possible continued use. Um, okay, I, I still don't understand. I think that we can, we can, you know, close the building for the year and still go to the Select Board. Is that, do you not, do you, do you see that? I, I, I guess I don't see, I, do you see a conflict in that? I just see closing the building as being more costly than just um, reducing the heat and beginning the, the conversation with the select board um, about purchasing. There's going to be costs with doing that too. I mean, we're going to have to pay for a subdivision. You know, we're going to have to pay for things to, to get this done. It's not going to be free and it's not going to be a wave of magic wand and it gets done. There is, but we don't know what those costs are. Right. How do we know that that's not the same as what the electricity and the heat cost? Well, we're still going to have to pay the electricity because that's where our server is and that's where our communications are. So the only cost that you're going to reduce is the, the heating cost, which if we reduce it to 55, like we were talking about, then we will, we will have reduced that. So how long do you want to put this off for, Amy? No, I want to talk to the town about taking possession of it with the possibility that our board can still discuss possible use of portions of it in the future. 
I don't want to shut that out completely. I'm not ready to say, here, town, take this building, and I am never, ever going to put my kids in it again. I don't think that is fair to our kids. I don't think that is what um, the desire of our town is. I think they value the the arts program. I think they value the... the is, it fair, is it fair that my kid can't use the stage in the auditorium? Well, then I think we should ask about getting that fixed so that your kid can use the stage. I want I soccer think, to I think, our Okay, we're, we're no. getting at a bit of a rabbit no. hole here. Yes. yes. I think, I think, um, I, I think we all uh, hear and agree with you, Amy, that working with the select board um, is, you know, is, is our best path forward. Um, and I think that, you know, um, I also think that Ethan has a valid point that committing to, uh, to, 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 to move, I mean, if, you know, to, to, to moving forward with reducing the use of that building is, you know, and, and not using it for student activities. And maybe that is just turning down the heat. I think we'll have to wait to see what Jamie's, you know, Jamie's proposal is uh, about that around the technology. As Ray was saying, he's not sure what goes on with fire control and, 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 and things like that. So I think we can, we can, you know, address that piece of it. I think what we need to decide tonight is do we think that we can put forward a position that the board, you know, a motion that the board can support and uh, move forward with that would get us some movement from the voter constituency on our budget that we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to say here, we're saying we're not going to use this building for at least a year. And we're going to work really hard to come up with a, with a, with a, with a long-term plan, whatever that is. Um, so that when we come back to you with the next budget, we've got, you know, a, a plan that we're not trying to, 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 to uh, uh, you know, we're not trying to build the boat as we sail it. We're saying, you know, here's the, you know, we, we need to think about the statement that we can make as a board about this, that we can get behind that was trying to answer and, 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 and address some of our community concerns so that we can get a budget passed. And it seems to, it, it seems to me from the point, and I, I have to say, at least what I'm hearing on this side of the, of the district, that, you know, again, it's the, 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 it's the, you know, it's the building is the big, people are very upset that we are still using, using parts of that building. And, you know, Ethan's making a point that I think is, is worth considering that should we, you know, should we uh, 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 work with that and acknowledge that and use that, you know, use that to work out a compromise for the greater good? Hey, Carl, this is Megan. I just want to say one last thing. I'm okay with, uh, you know, an experiment for one year. I, I just think, I think the concern I have is, and I think I'm hearing Amy say, it's just, it's just the ability to have a future discussion. And if that's included in this experiment, then I am okay with that experiment and figuring out ways to creatively reduce our uses and move into one building. But I just don't want to put a line in the sand that is like a black and white when you're like, you said you weren't going to do this. And I just want to have the ability, just like just the ability to have a conversation. That's it. I, 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 I understand. And I, I understand that. And I hear you. And I think uh, I want to reemphasize re a point I made earlier, which was that if we do this and we say to the town that this is where we're going, um, please, please revote this budget. We hear you. What we can't do is turn around in, in, in November or, 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 or January and say, oh, really, we should change things around. If we're, if we're committing to doing this, we have to be committing to doing this for at least the year and then going back at the end of the year and not just saying, oh, well, it didn't work. We're back to situation normal. Going back at the end of the year and saying, we, we, you know, at the end of this experiment, we've, we've developed these, these theories. Here's our plan that works with, with the town and Envision Rochester and releasing space. Here's the plan that involves, you know, uh, uh, putting a third floor on the Rochester building or putting a second floor on the Stockbridge building and moving everyone there. Whatever it is that if we commit, if we go back, in my mind, if we go back to our taxpayers and say, we hear you about the building, we're going to we're going to not use it for a year at least, and we're going to figure out a plan in that year to move forward. I think we can get some traction with getting a better vote. And we'll certainly hear when we get to public comment 
uh, I agree. Whether, I'm, whether I'm, I'm right or wrong with that. I just think it's important that if we make that commitment, we're not going, we're not going to go back and, and, and say, oh, well, we decided that really we needed to open that building for, 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 for this reason or that reason. I think there's a difference between heating a server room or a phone room because we have to keep these alarm panels running so the building doesn't burn down, you know, and, you, and doing that with maybe a space heater um, or, 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 or something um, versus, you know, versus saying, let's, you know, let's, let's just heat a few rooms and, and, and do that. So yeah, I, think, I, I think that's very, I, I just think that in my mind to, to start wrapping up this conversation to where we decide if we're going to have a vote or what we're going to do, I think it's just very important that whatever we make a decision about this building tonight, we support that with our taxpayers. We don't change it. Last comments from anyone? If, yes. Um, to, um, this is exactly what I was hoping for. And I think it's exactly what our communities are hoping for is a really hard nails, tough um, disagreement. We've almost always voted together as a board. And I think this is an issue that's going to, you know, going to be tough for us. And that's okay. The other thing that I think we have to include in this conversation is that all we talk about is Rochester and that we have to talk about the merger. We are two campuses, one school, and it has to be a, a, an inclusive conversation about what the whole school needs. Because if, if, it, if it gets for this tit for tat, then, then, then we're done. And we really should start thinking about breaking up and, and that should be our conversation and not. If we really want this school, well then maybe it is time to think about how we go another way. And if we can survive without Stockbridge and maybe I'm wrong, maybe that is a possibility. But I'm just saying that the conversation is always this sort of just about the building. And it needs to be a broader one about the vision for our schools, our school, because it is one school going forward. And I, I, I'm, that's my job here is to just push that. Um, I, I don't have all these answers. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't do any numbers for all this. I, I get it. I hear Bonnie, I hear Lindy, I hear Amy, I hear Megan, I hear Jenny, I hear all of you. I also hear you know, the other people who are on Facebook and, and on things. We, we have to keep moving. This is the most important issue for us right now. And we want to get through it so that we can get back to education, which is what we love to talk about. Very well said, Ethan. Uh, any other board comment before uh, Ethan uh, makes a motion? Or I can entertain a motion if you'd like to do it that way. Boy, thank you. And now I got to word it. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to agree with you, Carl. Right now, um, I think I think that's the way to go. That we uh, we instruct. Um, I entertain a motion to close the entire high school down to 55 for the year. Um, with uh, and help me with this because I'm the technical parts of it. I'm going to with with con special concerns for technical elements that need to be supported um, while the board. Uh, vigorously investigates uh, a, a future use for the building that allows um, that allows it to no longer be part of um, and and you'll add words if you want Megan or, J or Amy about you know that allows some backwards. This is my first go. Uh, anybody writing this down? Because I'm not. I have I mean, it it's... paraphrased. What can you read it back? What what did that sound like, Jenny? Oh, geez. Um, entertain a motion to close the school to 55 degrees for the year with special concern for technical elements that need to be supported while the board pursues ways to allow something. Can we put vigorously in there? Vigorously pursues uh, sure. uh, the board vi vigorously pursues long term options for uh, 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 for for building use. I, I, this I is mean, Megan. I, I'm, co I'm comfortable with that. Uh, what part of the wording of the, the year the use and vigorously looking at uh, what we're doing okay so what do you doing, what doing what's your what's your version give us a version uh megan do you have a version you agreed with, with it 
She agreed. Oh, she did. Oh, she agreed. Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree. Yeah, I know. I agreed with you, Ethan. I. I oh, okay. I sorry, I totally misunderstood. Oh no! Oh my God! No, uh, no, no, yeah, no, no. no. My... Amy, Amy, any any questions for you, Amy? As far as this wording, uh, no. I, 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 yeah, go. I, I was sorry. just wondering if we are actually at the stage to start discussing with the select board, Rochester select board, and if that needed to be in the motion, or maybe we are. That is a separate motion that we're not at that. Let's make that a separate motion. Let's make that a separate motion, please. And let's also, Ethan, if we could friendly amend your motion to say rather than reducing the building's heat to 55, um, let's just say uh, uh, not using that building for student activity because that makes it that, that makes it we can put it at 55, we can put it at 45 if we can, we can do whatever yeah. it is. We're just saying that we're not using that building for student activity for, the, for, for at least the, the upcoming school year. Thank you, Carl. I prefer that because I can come to you in September and say, here's the plan to save the most resources and oh, it's the most efficient. I, I agree. And that is actually what my original motion, I think, was going to be that I wrote down. Hey, Carl, that's actually consistent with something we were told a year and a half ago when the when the plumber guys were in there crawling around. They said you could actually go lower if the building, um, I'll struggle with the words here, but if the building was closed up in the right way, if you actually had technical support to closing it, the temperature could probably go lower. Great, and that's that's. I think I remember you saying something about that about that uh, a, a couple of years ago, and I think again, I think that's where we'll rely on on Jamie and uh, uh, some of the SU to give us, you know, to give us that that, that technical recommendation because I, I again I think. The biggest job you and Lindy need to be focused on is how to bring our kids back mid October or mid uh, mid October, mid August, late August, early October, early September, and educate them. You should let you you should offer anything around the uh, dealing with the building, you know, to to either the board or to to the SU, and we'll get you know an, an engineer or a consultant or someone in to to to, to, to work with that because uh -huh. I. I don't, you know, I don't want you guys to have to to do more than sort out what are the things you want to take out of the art room kind of stuff. Bonnie and Lindy, is this consistent with um, COVID? Uh, you know, what your thoughts are for for the for the upcoming school year with the COVID considerations, uh, it, or are we now taking away anything that you are thinking of using as possible space? Um, I. I, I think it's premature. I think we're probably fine, Amy. The only the only question that uh, made us think we might need to have classrooms over there was if we had to close classrooms for 24 to 48 hours before we could uh, reoccupy them again. But we have since found that uh, if there is a positive case in a classroom, everybody in the classroom needs to quarantine for 14 days. So that that takes that off the table. Well, I, I heard, that classroom. I'm, not, I'm not saying that's good news. I'm just saying no, that's no. taking that off the table. I, I just heard some mention of tents, and I just wanted to make sure we're not now putting a uh, cost at buying tents because we need more space. No, no, tents are because we want to be outside. We want to be yeah. outside as yeah. much as we can. Yes, okay. Has okay. nothing to do with so, classrooms. Uh, did I hear, did, did, I, I don't know who seconded Ethan's motion because we were kind of all uh, wordsmithing it with him. Did anyone second it? I will second it, Megan. Can Thanks. I read? Can I reread what I have so that everyone agrees? Would be very to it? good. Yes, we would. Uh, I'd ask you that. Uh, Carl, or not Carl? Ethan entertains a motion to not using the high school building for student activity for the upcoming school year with special concerns for technical elements that need to be supported while the board vigorously pursues long-term options for building use. Works for me. You can't wear that all day long. I second. Okay, a motion has been made and seconded uh, that the uh, board not use the high school building for uh, uh, student activities in at least the 1920 or the 2021 school year uh, with considerations for the technical uh, uh, support of the building uh, as well as uh, the board vigorously pursues a long term uh, long term building options. Um, any other discussion? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Nope. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Go for a vote. Uh, Amy, you're the A. I. Uh, Ethan, you're an E. Or I'm a C. So Carl says I. Ethan. I. Uh, Jenny. I. Megan. I. 
Uh, the motion carries unanimously, five to zero. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, we Thank now you all. start catching up uh, all the time that we ran over on that. Um, we have to discuss the, uh, uh, I think we pretty much covered the building in, 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 in the, the vote discussion as well. Um, I suggest let's have the public comment and then we'll decide if we want to warn the vote for the 11th or do you want to just warn the vote now? I, yeah. I, I think let's wait and let's, let's wait and, 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 and see if everyone, if everyone uh, uh, is, is okay with our, our options. Uh, yeah. I agree. Um, one of the things that, though around the um, the vote and the and the and such was that um, I would like I was thinking that maybe it'd be beneficial for us to send out another um, possibly a, a single page mailer that just kind of is a frequently asked questions and some facts because there was a lot of um maybe um misunderstood uh, information out there that was um. You know, we want to make sure everybody has the exact right information, and if we have that mail permit, and we can yeah, absolutely. And we would we would need to have another info. It's an Australian ballot, so by law we're required to have another informational session. So we would uh, probably have that on our first August meeting, but we would still have to have that that online informational session for the public explaining what we're doing as well. So yeah, I think a mailer, a postcard, or a one pager. I don't think we need to to print yeah. a third page booklet again with a dip, with just changing a letter in it. I think uh, I, I think a mailing would be would, would be good. I, I I would like us to do it piggyback it with a pri with a primary just because that means we don't have to get our town clerks and our CBAs and everyone out um, handling a, a third election. They can just do they can just do it as part of that, and it'd be a one article. It'd be a one article warning, um, and uh, we can let's let's do that later in the meeting. Let's move into. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the the tax anticipation note. That's Tara, if she's still awake. I'm here, I just have to find the unmute button. Okay, so each year, as you're aware, we go out and we obtain a tax anticipation note, which allows your school district treasurer to use those funds to cover your expenditures until your tax revenue and the revenue from the education spending fund are received in your district. Because you do not have a past budget at this time, we are only allowed to borrow 87% of your prior year budget. So with that said, your tax anticipation note for FY21 is in the amount of 1000000 $352,079. And that is with Community National Bank. So I just need you to accept that tax anticipation note. Uh, and then Tara, now, yep. Question. Um, do we usually get the tax anticipation note for the full amount of our budget, our full expenditures amount? It's usually 90%. 90%. So we're only down 3% of your prior year budget. Oh, of prior year. Right. Um, uh, and would is this the done deal for the year then? We, we will not revisit this once a budget passes? You will not, no. If you don't have enough, if you end up needing more money, um, we would not obtain a second tax anticipation note. We would obtain what's called a current expenditure note, which is an alternative borrowing option should you need it in the future. It's just probably higher interest rates. Yeah, it's different funding terms. And Okay, and we need to um, vote on this uh, tonight? Yes, I need you to accept it because your treasurer needs money to cover your bills. <laughs> I would entertain a motion that we uh, that we accept the tax anticipation note as presented by the business manager. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. second. A motion has been made and seconded that we approve the uh, tax anticipation note as presented by the business manager. All those in favor, please by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Tax anticipation note. Um, quick, before we move on, Carl, I need you to do one more action on your can. 
Okay. So I emailed earlier to the entire board the loan documents. Okay. And now that you have reorganized, I need you to make a motion to allow the board chair and the board clerk to sign the FY21 tax anticipation loan documents on behalf of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. And then I need you and Jenny to please sign the loan docs and send them back to me. Okay. Um, so I would entertain a motion that uh, uh, I would allow uh, myself as the chair and Jenny as the clerk to sign the tax anticipation notice on, uh, on behalf of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. The motion has been made and seconded to allow myself as the chair and Jenny as the board clerk to sign the tax anticipation notices uh, on behalf of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. The ayes have it. Uh, the motion carries unanimously. Um, now, Tara, move us into the audit, baby. So I emailed you all the draft audit for your review and consideration prior to tonight's meeting in hopes that it gave you time to ask questions um, so that you as a board can accept your FY19 audit as presented so we can get it finalized and out to everybody. Oh. Yeah, I would like a hard copy of it, please. And, and then maybe a lesson on how to read it. Can you give us a five minute summary, Tara, or two minute summary, if there's anything red flags or if everything you think looks? We had already discussed in a prior meeting what your FY19 projected surplus was. So that was that $259,483 that's your unassigned fund balance, which was found on page 16. We reduced from that number the Woodstock FY19 tuition bill that we received in May. So it brought that projected surplus down to 171,987, which is what we use to build your FY20 budget off from. So that did not change in the budget drafts. The findings that were found in the audit as far as management letter concerns were um, procedures within the business office that will be addressed with the executive committee, which was outlined in the memo to you. Um, other than that, there were no findings in your actual audit, so you were good there. So everything is the same as what it was in our in our budget numbers. Nothing yep. would change. No, nothing changed there as of this point. Okay. Um, what would end up changing that, Jenny, is if you know any other bills came in in FY twenty that needed to be allocated, but at this point, we haven't seen any additional invoices. Okay. Um, so then uh, those invoices we booked, would, would those be, would, those, would they rewrite our audit or would they add those to our next year's audit as prior year fund records? That is exactly what they would do, Carl. It would just be a prior year, re re prior okay. year restatement in the FY20 right. audit. So the, 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 this 1819 audit is, 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 is final as of this yes. moment. The, other of, the moment you accept it as a board, I can have the prior superintendent sign the acceptance letter and get it to the auditors so that the auditors can issue the final version of the FY 1819 audit. Okay, I would entertain a, a notion that a notion. I would entertain a notion that the uh, board accept the uh, eighteen nineteen audit as presented to us by our mis business manager. So a motion has been made and seconded, uh, made by Ethan, seconded by Megan, to uh, accept the eighteen nineteen audit as presented by our business manager. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Hearing none, the audit, the audit is accepted un, uh, unanimously. Um, our last uh, action item is an employee conflict of interest policy that was circulated uh, to us from the central office. It's pretty much a boilerplate. Um, you know, if you work, it, it, you, you can't be uh, an SU employee or a school employee and be a school vendor or uh, uh, recommend things. It's really 
It's not. It's uh, Jamie. Can you can you confirm that this is this is just straight up um, the recommendation from the VSBA or from? Yeah, this is this is based on model model policy. That, that that that's what I was pretty sure. There's there's no real change in it. Um, is there any discussion that people want to make? Are we are we comfortable with approving this this uh, policy tonight? I make a motion to approve this policy. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Uh, a motion has been made and seconded that we uh, approve the employee conflict of interest policy as pre presented by the uh, SU office. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. We've uh, adopted unanimously the uh, SU's employee conflict of interest policy. Um, it is now time for public comment. We're going to do this uh, the way we did it for the informational meeting, which means I'm going to go down the list of people that are uh, on the phone. I'm going to say the last two digits of your phone number. Uh, if you have something you'd like to say, you need to unmute. You need to identify the town that you're a voter from. So I would say, I'm Carl Grappi. I'm a Stockbridge voter. Um, Ethan would say, I'm Ethan Bowen. Bowen. I'm a Rochester voter. Um, as well as uh, uh, your comment, comments by by bylaw are limited to uh, a, a five minute response. Um, we will try to answer you. And depending on, you know, the meeting is getting up against its two hour deadline right now. Um, depending on how many people have questions, um, we may try to go through the list uh, multiple times. But in general, uh, uh, well, the bylaws allow for each person to comment once. Finally, as, as has been pointed out to me by uh, 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 members of our town select boards, uh, the comment really needs to be restricted to the things that were on the agenda. So you, for example, can talk about buildings. We had buildings as an agenda item. Um, this would not be the place to discuss our need for a, for a world language program um, because that was not, that, 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 that's not germane to, to the agenda of, of this meeting. Uh, hopefully I've said everything clearly and I'm getting better at, at doing this. I'm going to go down the list. Uh, the caller. Oh, good point. Thank you, Lindy. Um, yeah. Uh, before we get into this, she points out that I skipped two discussion items because I scrolled right into the action items. Um, we did not have a discussion. We did not have the comment. Is Vic still here? He was going to, to, uh, briefly comment on the letter that the Envision Rochester has sent to the board. If you're here, Vic, you can star six, uh, star six and unmute and speak to that. Otherwise, um, the board has received a, uh, a letter and we, we can uh, distribute copies to anyone who's interested from the Envision Rochester group saying that they are interested in working with us and want to be kept in the conversation and in the loop as we develop our, our, our plans going forward. I think if uh, anyone uh, from the Envision Rochester team uh, was, was here, well, I know Amy's on it, um, uh, I think they heard that we are interested in, in hearing their input and hearing their ideas and, and working with them and with the town uh, going forward to, to, to figure out how to best uh, make that building work for the town of Rochester as well as uh, the, the, the school. Um, then the COVID task update, uh, Bonnie, that is you and that is actually something we really need, we, we do need to hear about. Okay, so let me, uh, I think I can do this in a fairly timely fashion, though I do know it's important and people want to hear about it. Um, there is a district-wide, uh, Jamie convened a district-wide uh, COVID task force. Uh, the task force has been working for about the last five to six weeks. Jamie, Lindy, myself uh, are all members of that task force. Um, as we look toward the opening of school, the number one uh, priority that we have is the health and safety uh, of both youngsters and staff. Um, that will continue to be our first priority. We'll obviously endeavor to educate um, as well as we can, but we will also continue to repeat that we're in the middle of a pandemic and the health and safety of everyone in the system uh, has to be uh, what drives our decisions. Um, there's basically uh, three types of guidance that we're using to work with. Uh, the first level of guidance is, is basically the governor's guidance. The governor um, makes a determination, um, as we've heard over the last several weeks, of uh, where we are as a state in terms of 
how well we're, we're slowing the virus, how well we're slowing the curve of it. Um, so he makes a determination. The determination he's made that most directly impacts us is that we, all schools in the state of Vermont, at this point in time, will open in what's called phase two. There really are three phases that they identify. The first phase is full distance learning, uh, like all schools were in the spring when the governor uh, shut down schools across the state. Phase two is in-person learning with a fair amount of uh, restrictions. And it's phase two and how to implement the recommendations slash uh, restrictions um, that's been really the work of the district-wide uh, COVID task force. Phase three is also uh, in-person learning with fewer restrictions. So if you kind of just keep those three phases in your mind, um, it sort of gives us some context. And then there's these three sort of large streams of guidance. One I explained was the governor's guidance. Um, a second is uh, the guidance from the AOE. And on June 17th, um, the AOE released um, a document called the Strong and Healthy Start. And those are the um, safety and health uh, recommendations slash guidance for schools opening uh, in the fall. And then the third level of guidance is, is from our risk management, which is basically our insurance company. Tara received the document at the end of last week. Um, she shared that with me. I've had a chance to look at it, though not read it as thoroughly as I would have liked. Um, but it basically is a facilities reopening uh, guide. That, that's pretty much what the, um, what the insurance company has provided at this point. Uh, I'm going to stress what the AOE has continued to stress, and that, we, that is that we will probably in schools be shifting among phase one, phase two, phase three. And those decisions will be made based on what is going on in a geographic area in terms of health information. It is felt that we uh, may not see, uh, hoping won't see, a statewide closure of schools, but rather it will be more geographically isolated. So if the virus seems to be getting a foothold in Bennington, um, the schools in Rochester and Stockbridge will not be asked to close. And that's a hopeful sign because the degree to which we can um, keep the virus out of our schools, out of our communities, uh, translates into schools being able to remain open um, and accessible to youngsters. And that's, um, that's really important. Um, we are finding in general, not just our schools, but in general, we're finding that um, the amount of time that youngsters were out of school um, sort of played out in a number of ways that aren't particularly positive. Learning gains, social interactions, those kinds of things. So the goal is, while we recognize that the public health issues have to be what drives our decisions, we need to work very, very hard to implement those so that we, in fact, can keep our schools open. The um, recommendations or the guidance that's been given, if you think about- Bonnie, I'm sorry, could you just repeat that last bit you said? The last bit about the guidance and um, I just, it was the last paragraph, if you could. Do you remember? Uh, no, I, I think what I was talking about, um, Ethan, was that we would, uh, the AOE continues to stress and we will also, that we will be moving back and forth between these three phases based on, based on how the virus is being controlled. And that it's, we're hopeful that there won't be another statewide shutdown of schools rather more geographic. And the reason for that is, is that the, the professionals that study this have found, you know, there are things that were not so positive about the extent, there were a lot of things that weren't positive about the extent of time that youngsters have been away from school. So our goal is to keep schools open while at the same time doing whatever we can um, to provide a, a, a safe environment for, for everyone. Did that answer it? Okay. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is um, if you think of sort of two broad brushstrokes, one being um, promoting healthy behavior and the other being providing um, healthy environments, that's pretty much what school principals and um, task force groups and schools reopening groups are focusing on right now. What is it that we need to um, 
be able to teach youngsters in terms of new behaviors when they come back to school because it clearly won't be the same school that they came that they left and then the other piece is um, how do we provide healthy environments and that has to do with the um, deep cleaning and disinfecting it has to do with modified building layouts um, looking at ventilation systems um, although there's a little bit of concern that's cropping up, I received an email today because of this notion that the virus may be becoming airborne. Uh, some of the recommendations around ventilation systems may be changing. Um, food service we're looking at, we're looking at building access, limiting building access. Kind of the big general idea that they're hoping that we can attain in schools is this notion called cohorting. I, I think. I think we've taken it down there and turned it into something else, but they're, they're talking about cohorting. And that means, can we bring groups of children together and basically maintain those groups without a lot of interaction with other groups? And I'll tell you why that is, is important. Early on when there was a discussion about what schools would look like in the fall, we were hearing things like no recess, um, kids couldn't get up and leave their desks. Kids would have to be, you know, maintained in, in basically classrooms um, in a pretty restricted way. Um, obviously, some other thinkers got to thinking about the likelihood of that not being too probable, nor even possible, nor is it a good idea for, for any human beings, actually, say nothing about little ones. So they've moved to this concept of cohorting, which basically means we're going to try and keep groups of kids together. They can go out to recess together. They can eat lunch together. They can do some activities together um, while at the same time not having cohorts uh, intermingling. And the major reason for that is, and I, I alluded to that a, a few minutes ago, is that if a child in a classroom or a cohort or an adult tests positive for the virus, then everyone in that room would need to quarantine for 14 days. So what you want to try and prevent is having your entire school have to quarantine for 14 days because everyone's been intermingling with everyone else and someone is tested positive. Um, so that pretty much are the, are the broad brushstrokes. There's a lot of details uh, we have yet to put to these recommendations, and that's what we're working on at the moment. The, the recommendations from the task force came in today. Today was the due date for that. We have a meeting on Thursday uh, to hopefully finalize the recommendations um, that we will then pass on to Jamie. Um, and then we'll figure out what is what is the next step in our district. Principals have been uh, very actively planning for opening of school. Um, it's not like anyone has been standing waiting to hear what the guidance is going to be because we've sort of had a sense of what we address. So I think we're well positioned um, to be ready to open school um, under the current guidance. And I need to stress that we continue to hear all of this could change in a moment. So that's sort of the reality that we're moving forward with. Bonnie, Thank I you. have a question about um, the last thing you said um, with the cohorts. Um, how does siblings play a role in that when you have that's just going to be that's just going to be the reality, Amy. We, we we can't. There's there's no way that a school could could deal with that unless right. they didn't unless they went totally to phase one and had just distance distance okay. learning. Um, and then I, uh, I maybe this uh, task force probably was you know their their entire mission is about opening schools and how how that's going to look. In an SU meeting, I had asked about the possibility of. Um, parents who are, are unable to send their kids back to school due to, you know, grandmas living in the household or, or the, the risks are, do we have any mechanism in place that we would be able to retain those kids with um, a distance learning teacher rather than that family um, leaving our district and going to homeschool? So the answer to that would be yes, we are in the process of working through that. We have to be able, we have to be able to include those youngsters and to provide educational services. I can't tell you right now exactly what that's going to look like, but I do know that uh, Jamie is thinking a lot about that. Superintendents across the state are thinking a lot about that. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Bonnie, uh, question if I may. 
Um, what about, I've been reading articles about how teachers, um, especially elder teachers, are uh, worried about coming back to school. Are you, are you hearing are you hearing anything about that or you made any plans for that? that? That is, that's a contractual issue, Ethan, that I don't want to get into the details around right now, but certainly what it would require is, is that we've got, we're pretty procedures in place within our human resource department um, to ensure that there's equity about that across the SU and that um, that will be addressed to our teaching staff shortly. We, we vet that um, through the VSA and uh, legal. Jamie, now wouldn't they be perfect candidates to be the distance learning teacher? That is part of what we would be looking at, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that I, I had heard uh, from another board member <clears throat> is that uh, the AOE was, was thinking that if a family said that they wanted their child to be 100% distance learning at a Vermont public school, that actually would be a homeschooling situation. They would not be able to uh, count against a, a, a ADM or uh, daily, you know, anything like that, because if they were not, if they were not making arrangements to at least come into to, to school a certain number of days, they 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 could not be counted as 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 a student here. They'd have to be be homeschooled. Is that correct? So, Carl, the v, the VSA is working with the agency to talk about, you know, at what point would it be that a coronavirus impacts the actual personal health and well-being of a student that we would look like it looks like there's going to be some leniency there otherwise we'd be looking at how do we how are we building appropriate pathways based on the information the school receives and so we should be able to address some of these concerns via um Act 77 and personalized learning and, and proficiency based learning. So, so we, can, we, we can do a flexible pathways model and try to accommodate some of these kids for a family that may say, I don't want my kid uh, going to school that much because because grandma lives here and she's super, super sensitive to these things. We're going to take that case by case. Yes, but that is part of what I'm looking to do at the SU is have a plan for that. Great. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Bonnie. You're welcome. It's, let me just, if I can, I just say a, 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 just two seconds about the tents idea, um, because I, I'm, Bonnie and Lindy and I have talked about the idea of outdoor tents um, and what kind of tents we can get, what kind of tents we can get loaned, um, what kind of tents. So I'm, my goal is to work this out that each school, I think, um, Lindy, you said that uh, uh you found four and need three more and we need seven or something like that for rochester um we're looking 10 at 20 10 to 20 footers um i saw the tent down at the um the camp at stockbridge 20 by 20 i think that's a better model um i'm going to talk to some of the rental companies see what we can do but i'm also looking for donations and we'll put some ads out i'm my goal is to make this happen without any extra expense to the budget that's if I can, that's my goal um, uh, by either raising some money or donations or see what we can do. Um, I'll, I'll come back to you with that, um, but I'm working um, on that right now. Okay, thank you, Ethan. And also keep in mind that, you know, CARES funding for, for specific COVID related uh, expenses can be covered. So if we did have to buy, you know, a, a, a tent to, to set up an outdoor, uh, uh, camp at an outdoor classroom space that that is something we we certainly might be able to uh, uh get reimbursed through through cares um, I who, would i talk to tara about that or would i talk bring yeah. it to the board or what's the what's the i think talking to tara about the guidelines would be a good place to start well, I, I, and i would prefer that if you secure stuff when you pass that along to along to bonnie and lindy then they can take care of it from there okay Good. Uh, I'll, well, I'm gonna, my hope is to bring them um, some options, right. and um, and and see what see what we can do with that. Um, I'm that actually people... thinking that a bigger, maybe a bigger tent, if we could get, you know, like a wedding tent, twenty by forty or something like that, or even a thirty by forty, gives us a lot of space for being outside. But I, again, uh, and some of the guidelines as far as ventilation and things like that, whether you want size on the tent, whether you'd rather have cross ventilation. Um, uh, you know, this, these are all questions to be answered as well. I think this is a wonderful idea. I think this pushes forward our environmental, um, you know, outdoor learning. Um, I think that this could actually be quite attractive to some of our um, 
uh, uh, towns that, that tuition their kids um, and they might feel more comfortable with that type of learning in this, this new environment. Um, so I think this is a great initiative. And, and if we are able to go forward with this, I think we should advertise it. Absolutely. I was just thinking the same thing. If you had something, when you have something put together, Ethan, I think that would be good to let people know about it. And also if you're still looking for a donation. Yeah, I just want to check, is the board, are you guys getting my updates? Are they getting pushed out to all of you? I'm doing bi-weekly letters. You guys checking in on those? No, I have not received I, I have on the SG one website. Email. They should be getting pushed out through your schools. I have not received one of my emails. Uh, I, I guess I wasn't sure if it was directed. At I've not me. received one. I'm just I'm hearing you guys bring up a lot of things that I'm addressing in my letters. So I'll find mm -hmm. out where the hang up is there. Thank Megan, you. Can you, Megan, can you give me a call? Because we've sent those out to all our parent emails. So I just need to figure out why you're not getting it. I guess. Um, uh, maybe if you could also tell us what the title of it was, and then I'd know what I'm identifying. That would be great. What the title of the email was? It typically says Superintendent COVID-19 updates or task force updates. Oh, okay. I have seen one of those. Um, check one them just out. Went out. I will now practice. And, and I forgive me, Jamie, I may have just sort of gone, oh yeah, and not read it. So forgive me. I will rectify that for myself at least. I'm going to stay on, folks, about reading things. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, well, that's great. it Thank for you. our last questions. Is there any other questions on the uh, COVID-19 update and uh, where we stand uh, as far as uh, uh, ramping up uh, in September and onboarding all our kids? Okay, now we're going to move to public comment. Uh, again, I'm going to go down the list of people that are connected. I'm going to say the last two digits of your phone number. You can hit star six to unmute. Uh, you need to identify the town that you are a registered voter in and uh, make your comment. Please try to keep your comments to under five minutes. We will try to go through, uh, uh, we'll give everyone at least one opportunity to speak. So the person that is at star 15, area code 443 star 15, do you have a comment? This, this is Rob Gardner from Rochester. So I just wanted to say very quickly, uh, I think it's extremely important going forward that the board does a better job communicating to both communities the complexity of, of these issues. Um, I think six months ago, the um, when the building committee stopped, that's not, we, we heard nothing about that building committee or what they said, what the conclusions were for six months. But everything you talked about tonight relating to the building was talked about in that committee, and you lost six months of conversation with the community about these issues. So that's not to assign blame, but to assign, I guess, regret. So I really think that these uh, issues need to be made clear. Ethan's suggestion to me is a blunt uh, object, a blunt weapon, rather than a scalpel for something so complicated. But I guess it works, and I wish it well. And that's the end of my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, the caller from area code 617, whose number ends in 92. Star six to unmute. The caller in area code 770, who's up. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, star 92, continue. Oh. Um, okay, the person. Uh, in uh, area code 802, whose number ends in star 38. Go ahead. Hey, Keith from Stockbridge, how you doing? Okay, Keith, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks so much. Hope you had a nice fourth. First, I'd like to commend Ethan with his vision on how to bring the districts together. Um, I thought his comments were quite relevant and uh, to the point, uh, it was disappointing to hear some of the other comments that seem to continue to perpetuate the separation of the Rochester slash Stockbridge district. So that certainly was disappointing and is not something that's going to bring our communities together. Uh, my one question would be that if you are to put forth the same budget that was rejected, um, will it note the fact that you're looking to 
uh, mothball, for lack of a better term, the existing high school? Um, I think I do not believe that that is part of or, or, or can be part of the statutory language of the warning. I think that can be part of the uh, presentation from the board to the community. Um, you know, uh, and and can be you know can 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 be commented and 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 uh, you know it can be made you know as a promise. I think we discussed that uh, in the meeting. I do not believe that it can be made. It it, it can be made uh, part of the condition of, of 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 approving the budget. However, at least at least uh, statutorily, it's certainly like I said, it can be part part of the conversation and, and part of what the board would be committing to the ta to to the taxpayers. So in other words, we, we are then voting on the same budget that was turned down uh, and just basing it on the fact that a promise has been made to do this. What about removing the cost to fuel the building? Take those out of the budget. Um, that's, certainly, uh, that's certainly something we can consider. Um, I don't know if Tara can pull those numbers together uh um, it was in your budget i thought when i looked at the numbers it was like a total of forty thousand dollars to um for electricity and fuel in that building it was 28 743 okay. and and 12 18 so it's about forty thousand dollars worth of um costs that um are right. attributed we would have, to, we would have to, to to identify those lines and and pull out of certainly we can uh uh, we can consider doing that. Um, it's something we would have to, uh, as a board, get together and do and, and, and get that done before the 11th. But um, that is certainly uh, that is certainly an option that, that we could do because we're not we're not discuss we, we, we weren't discussing a, a reconsideration vote, which requires the, 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 the article to remain the same. We, we certainly could adjust it. But that certainly would put some teeth into what the board's trying to commit to the community and make the community feel a little bit more at ease, since obviously uh, the communities are concerned. Certainly, uh, uh, your, your, your point is taken, sir. Thank you so much. No worries. Uh, the caller at 802 that ends in star state. Hey, Carl, it's Tim Pratt from Rochester. Hi, Tim. How are you? Okay, so this is a lot to digest, and you know you guys are sticking to it. But here, here's the thing: we never saw what the price tag for that study was, and we never really got the information where the money came from. There was talk early on in the merge that there was money left over that would pay for revisiting or looking at uh, structures. That was never finalized. That was never, so like Rob said, the building committee got done in December. The last meeting was December 10th. Then Revision Rochester shows up. You've got a third party talking between the select board and the school board. Why hasn't RSUD gone to the Rochester Select Board and asked, do you think the town would be interested in taking over the building? Then Rochester never, Rochester tuitioned out their 40 kids in high school. The budget didn't drop down because the $18,000 tuition was being spent at uh, receiving schools, that budget should have dropped down about 250000 bucks. because we knew at the time $25,000 was being spent per student in Rochester. That had nothing to do with Stockbridge because Stockbridge was already tuitioning out there 7 through 12. So these budgets for the last three years have been being backed into. We find the threshold and we fill in the blanks. It, it just doesn't make any sense. So if Rochester, if the RSUD board went to the select board and said, 
would you be willing to ask the voters to take over the Rochester school? We know that our tuition kids are 18000 bucks, but Rochester in the past has agreed to pay more money to keep students in school. Why wouldn't Rochester agree to spend $3,000 for the 37 kids? That, that would add 110000 bucks to maintenance on that building in one day. So I think Ethan's on the right track. I don't understand the whole holding the high school building. I sent Ethan an email that I had sent to Donna Russo tonight when when you, Carl, were talking about can the Rochester board lease a space. And I sent Ethan an email with that exact answer that came from Donna Russo on in 2017. Hmm. So this isn't something new. This isn't rushing forward. This has been discussed way before and during the merge. So, you know, that's a lot to digest too, but those are the facts and I can back it up if anybody wants to see those. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, the, the caller that is at uh, 802 star 85. Hi, this is Carrie McDonald. Can you hear me? Yes, Carrie, go ahead. Okay, Rochester resident. Um, yeah, I just, um, uh, you know, I understand uh, some community members and patients with the, the building process for sure. I mean, clearly this is a major issue that needs to be resolved in a timely manner. Um, but I also feel that we need to complete the process that we started and make a thoughtful and informed decision. I mean, we have, I believe, um, engineer reports. We have a building committee. What we need time for is information to be communicated thoroughly with the public. Um, my hope is that part of your vigorous pursuit this year <laughs> would be to engage the community in conversations. And, and not in this format, but in separate meetings where information is provided and proposals are provided and feedback is collected. Um, and, and for the record, you know, I'm okay with this idea that we're closing the high school down while we have those conversations and we make those plans. Um, and just a, a quick word on the high school spaces. I agree with Megan and Amy. I'm not in favor of closing the door to utilizing high school spaces down the road. Uh, you know, as we reduce our facilities, it does impact our programming. I mean, we can still have music, art, PE, but we're not being honest if we say there is no impact to programming. I mean, if we walk away from the high school, we would not have access to certain music equipment, um, to a designated place for our after school programs, to the pottery kiln. I know it sounds silly, but Rochester parents get the best Mother's and Father's Day gifts. It, it, it's just an example, but you know, every year we get these beautiful pieces of pottery from our kids. Um, it's something that makes our school special. So I guess what I'm wondering is why aren't we talking about how we make sure that both Rochester and Stockbridge kids have this resource? Um, as someone that's involved in the rec sports, I can tell you that any plans to repurpose the gym and no longer have that space available to play basketball and other sports, that's going to cause huge waves in Rochester. And we have some Stockbridge kids that play basketball. Um, it, you know, it impacts our families and their desire to live here. I think this discussion should be not about making sure that we remove every extra thing that the other school doesn't have we should be talking about how we can make sure all our kids have a rich educational experience by using the resources we have. And so I just encourage you all over this next year to think about how we can unify our communities further by making the high school resources available to our entire body, our entire student body, um, how we can elevate our, our offerings. And I'm not proposing that we continue to own that building and maintain that entire building. Um, I, I like this idea of potentially selling it to the town and leasing those spaces out later. And I agree with Jenny 
that we shouldn't be talking about that unless we're talking about how we use those spaces for all of our kids. Um, so that, that's it. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Um, we're going to go to 802, the caller that ends in star 88. Okay, we'll move on to uh, the caller in area code 802 whose number ends in star 91. There are two of you that are star 91s, actually. This is Caitlin McKinstry. I'm a Stockbridge voter. Um, I just, hi, how are you? <laughs> I just want to bring to the table. So Amy mentioned that shuttering expenses uh, could possibly cost as much as the, the heating and electric bills that we're already paying now. Then I pose the question, what's the point of doing that at all? The board has continuously not listened to the voters, has continually put this issue, and it is an issue, on the back burner. It's a hindrance on our school budget, not just for the utilities. Amy also stated several meetings back that the roof needs to be completely redone. And now more has come out that there is a continual flood issue because there's a drainage problem by the music room, which everybody so loves to talk about. Megan Payne doesn't want to draw and I quote, doesn't want to draw a line in the sand. Well, voting this budget, no. Voting it down was our way of telling the board that this is our line in the sand. We have waited long enough. The building committee has yet to be called again. It has yet to submit any form of, of financial numbers so that the community can look at it. This, this, um, the building report has been done for what, a year, a little over a year now. And we're still just sitting on all this information and the board keeps saying, well, more time, this is a lengthy project process. We need more time, we need more of this. Ethan's right, we're, we're tired of waiting. We want decisions made. If you put forth the same exact budget with just the promise, which there have been promises made before and broken, unless we have it in writing, unless there is a change in the budget, I personally will vote no again. And anybody that I talk to, I will encourage them to vote no because it's not going to get us anywhere just having prop promises. It's it's too it's just it's not fair. And the only thing we have going for keeping the high school building is Rochester people hanging on to this idea that it's this huge benefit for the children. It is a huge benefit for the children in Rochester. Stockbridge could use oh, a, uh, a new addition so that we don't have to have a multi-purpose room that is used for just about everything. But instead, we're choosing to pour more liability, more finances into a building that, quite frankly, financially isn't worth it because it's just going to have to keep going and going and going until it's fixed or until the whole budget is a bust. And the fact that everybody on the board had brought up that now we know there are controls in the high school that control the elementary, that further complicates the issue. And it makes it even more complicated and makes it even more muddled, a muddy mess that voters still don't have the information on. This has come out after the building report. We're just now learning of this, that the controls are there. You guys are not providing information in a timely manner so that we can make educated decisions. Voting no is our line in the sand. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carl. Caitlin. Could I, Carl? Can I respond just a, bit, a little bit? Um, I, um, to, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just to, um, um, uh, I, thank you for that because uh, there's the, those are really two issues that I think, and I've heard it from other people that. Um, 
along with this vigorous word we used, um, we need to, uh, and I don't know how we do this, but we have to get the building study out and we have to get the building committee finalized and we have to have that out there so that that again is not another thing that's, you know, that's, that's, that's an obstacle for us. I was going to uh, point out that uh, the, the building uh, committee report, the PDF is available on the internet. Um, I know it's on the school board page of the uh, Stockford Central School side, because I just helped uh, the, the uh, reporter from the Mountain Times find that uh, document today. So the, the, the full the full 80 page the full 80 page building uh, uh, building uh, uh, engineering study is available on, on on the internet. But but Carl, you have to agree that we've never done a full presentation on it. We have we have not we have not. I, I'm 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 not trying to to, to, to dodge around that issue. Um, nor am I I you know trying to uh, uh, you know say that the building committee the, you know the building committee did did a, did a stellar job. Um, well, what, quite I, frankly, what I am saying is that I want to make sure people had known because they had asked at a previous meeting where that where that report was if they didn't have to go to town offices to pick it up. And I'm saying that the PDF is available on on the uh, RSUD website. Right. And you had also told me that the board itself would not come out and say, these are the options we're looking at not all this other stuff, because that report can be overwhelming to people who don't know how to read an engineering report. And I am, in a lot of ways, that person. I can okay. divulge a lot. Into I, I, I'm, not trying to, I, I'm, I'm not trying to tell you you need to puzzle it out yourself. I'm just trying to make sure that the general, that the general, it was a misconception that was brought up that, that that report was only available in paper copies. And I was saying, making sure that everyone on the, on the call knew that the full, that the full engineering study is available to the public. The, bill, you, okay. and you, and the building committee has not produced an, a, a, a distillation of those 80 pages down into an understandable, uh, an, an understandable document. And that's because the building committee hasn't met in six months because it hasn't been called to meet by the board, despite the board being able to meet on um, electronically. And Joanne's been pushing for a meeting and there's she been no meeting. Um, and that's a I would like to call that we're going to be working on forward. Can I comment on this as I was on the building committee? Sure. That the building committee had struggled to have meaningful discussions. There was a lot of emotional friction at every conversation, making moving forward like trying to move forward subjectively to actually analyze the document was impossible. The committee could not even approve minutes from any of the meetings that were held. That means that the committee could not even agree on what the committee had talked about in the previous meeting. So I well, understand wait. what you're saying, and I wish that we had a document that was that could answer our questions. And I know that's what we're all looking for. Unfortunately, that's not what we're, we were able to do in that committee. And well, I, quite I, frankly, I, that committee was made up with too many people with conflicting um, conflicts of interest. Rod I, is on this new revision board in Rochester. Amy is on the school board. Carl is on the school board. That should have been a committee full of just average voters from the community. Not anybody on boards, not anybody on community boards, because it's just the voters who would look at that and look at what's important to other voters that are and that are commonplace, not what's according to the board, not what's according to this decision made by this community board. It's there's too many conflicts of interest on the building committee for them to create a coherent um, resolution to recommend. Kaylin, I'm not sure that there's. Um, we have beaten beaten the building committee dead horse into a, a pretty much of a bloody pulp. I think that it is it is fairly well known 
that the committee did not did 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 not for whatever reason, whether it was conflict of interest, whether it was uh, personalities, whether it was whatever it was, um, it was not successful. Um, when the building committee was first was was first proposed, it was part of a multi stage um, uh, effort to bring the conversation about the buildings to the communities. If you, uh, it was the building committee, uh, the, 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 the timeline that had been projected was originally the building committee uh, producing a, an executive summary and, and distilling that report down for something that the board could digest. And then the board could trigger community meetings that we had talked about uh, with a, a mediator to help have these conversations in both Stockbridge and in Rochester and bring that and, and bring that information to, 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 to some sort of, of community consensus. And certainly that's a, a fine sounding plan that fell flat on the face, but that, that, that was the intention. And it was more than just, just a, 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 a building committee analysis and response. There was, there was a place for community engagement. And I think the board still feels that there's really a big and important place for, for community engagement. And that's with the communities of Stockbridge and of Rochester. And that includes uh, whether there's a citizen, whether there's a, a, a nonprofit, uh, a community group uh, that includes speaking to the select boards. Uh, again, the board's original idea was the board wanted to figure out what it wanted educationally before it presented anything to a select board or to a community group or to uh, 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 any kind of nonprofit. So, so that was the process that we're that, that 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 we're trying to do. We haven't been successful at it. It doesn't mean that we 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 weren't uh, 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 trying to go there. I think that that we we hear what you're saying that the that the, that the building committee still needs to be uh, uh, still needs to be heard, and we certainly have gone on for more than 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 five minutes that that one comment is supposed to get. So thank you very much for your input, and we look forward to hearing hearing from you as we move forward in in, in into the community engagement piece. Um, whoever's at uh, eight hundred two star nine nine. I see that your mic up. Oh, okay. Um, we now have, let's see, Amy, Bonnie, or and Ethan. Ethan Phelps, you're uh, on this call. Do you have a public comment, sir? Hi, yes, I do. Thanks for um, allowing me the chance to comment. Um, I just wanted to say thanks to Ethan Bowen um, for your bold suggestion. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been attending some of these meetings remotely as I can to, to listen and really see what the issues are. I you know, hear from my fellow Stockbridge residents. Um, I think it's unfortunate that the budget was largely voted down um, for the $40,000 worth of operating expenses for the high school, which in the larger picture of the budget, if I'm remembering correctly, was a $5 million budget. So it seems like it came down to less than one, uh, less than 1% of the total budget. Um, I certainly understand the frustration from folks on all sides, but I think we all need to remain as objective as we can and make sure we're using accurate information. Um, I can't find any data to support that there was a 25 plus thousand dollar um, per student expense in Rochester prior to the merger. I was reviewing some of that stuff tonight. Um, I have been able to start looking through um, the building committees, uh, the study report that was done. Um, I think, you know, our, our, as, a, as a combined Rochester Stockbridge school community, our efforts are best focused in, you know, quelling our desires to quickly get over this, the school, the high school issue um, quickly and really taking a longer term focus and thinking about what are we really facing here? And I, you know, this, the study report looks at something like 2.3 or $2.5 million of recommended infrastructure need in the Rochester Elementary Building, two, over $2 million in the Stockbridge Building. You know, they're old buildings. Um, the Stockbridge Building has been maintained better than the Rochester one, but that's a huge expense. You know, when, when this small district is gonna have to be looking at bonding over $4 million in the not too distant future, um, just to, catch up and and make our meet our our needs I, I think those are the types of things we need to be thinking about 
We also um, need to be thinking about how much sense does it make to be spending that amount of money on two different campuses where one of them you know, has an enrollment hovering around 40 to 45 kids, the other one around 90. Um, and even by Vermont standards, these are really small schools. And I, I, I know none of, there's no easy answers to any of these things, but I think those are the types of things that also need to play into these decisions. Personally, um, $40,000 for another year's worth of operating expenses in the high school to me seems like not a big deal, whether that's put into mothballing it, that seems to be a reasonable solution for the immediate short term. Um, if it can allow the process to finish, to have the community meetings that are desperately needed and to try to bring some unity back to this group. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Ethan. Um, it was pointed out to me in chat that I skipped the other uh, 802 star 91 person. So if that person uh, would want to comment. Can you hear me? Uh, I can. You're star four five. Okay, I just switched phones. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, I tricked you. <laughs> um, anyway, I would like to say this is Joanne Stockbridge. Um, the building committee was not a complete um mess, and I feel that it was stalled on purpose. And I believe that we had some very, very experienced people on it. Uh, we ha had two engineers, in fact, that did some research and did a fine job. We had our principals, we had board members, and we had community people. Yes, it got um, cantankerous. But if you watch the last movie of it on... Um, Orca, you will see that we did come to some agreement. However, when that meeting was over, two people that were not at the meeting did not like the outcome of that meeting. And that's when it fell apart. And then with many requests to have another meeting, it, we never had one. And one group formed a report and the other group formed a report and both had a lot of similar ideas in them. There was a little bit of verbiage that needed to be tweaked on both sides, but we never sat down at the table after that to do it. So it wasn't completely garbage. I think the problem is nobody wants to know what those numbers are to fix the two Rochester buildings. They are very, very high. And the Stockbridge building on the other end of the stick is very, very low. So that I believe has been held off because those numbers are outrageously different. And that is my opinion on that. And I would love to have one more meeting to put this to bed, agree on a document and move forward. It's not undoable. I know we can do this. Now, that's just a comment because my name was brought up and I felt like there were some things that were not actual said. So that's that. Now, my question is, and I would like an answer from each one of the board members if that's possible. What happens if in November the COVID is gone? It just ends. Is that experiment over or are we definitely going to agree on not using that high school building for anything, for any educational purposes or yard sales or anything. Can I have a yes from each one of the school board? Uh, I can begin. I certainly said that I felt that if the board, if the board took that action and, and made that motion, that there would not be, there would not be a, uh, a sort of, you know, the other building just collapsed on itself or, or, or you know, the bird that, that short of some sort of, you know, unexpected crisis that everyone finds obvious, that that, that, that would be the, that, that, that would be the board's commitment going forward and that the board would not, would not back uh, and say, okay, well, you know, we tried that for a year. We're just going to go back to the way it was. The board would, the board. Because I feel that that's exactly what's going to happen. 
That's where the second part of that motion came from uh, about the vigorous uh, attempt at finding a long-term solution. Um, okay, I, I hear your opinion, Joanne. Um, no, 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 I want an answer. I want a definite okay. answer. I, 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 and I, I, I know it's recorded, and I want to know that for one year today, that building will not be used. I gave you my answer. Um, if and that is? I said, I said that I had originally said in the, in the discussion of the original motion, I specifically said at that time that if the board adopted this, we could not, in my mind, we could not in, in good time go back. Oh, well, I, I can only speak for me, Joanne. In I'm my sorry. Mind, in my opinion, you asked for each board member. I'm saying me personally feel that by making that motion, the board cannot unilaterally just go back and say, oh, yeah, we're going to use that building. That we made it that we made the we made the commitment to not use it for an educational purposes for at least a year, and that that's what we have to stick to. That is Carl's. And everyone agrees. Um, uh, this is Ethan, and I say yes. Thank you, Ethan. Yes, this, this is, is Megan. I say yes. Yes, Thank I you. agree, Joanne. We have to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Okay, okay. I guess that's unanimous. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, okay, let's get back to, let's see, I was, I did Ethan Phelps, Janet Whitaker. Janet, do you have any comments? No, I, I agree with Ethan. I'm a Stockbridge resident and I would very much like to see the budget pass and people move forward and think more about, um, our educational needs and not just the building and just really frustrates me. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Janet. Uh, Karen uh, Rubin, do you have a comment? Carl, I feel like we need to okay. talk. I think Sorry. we need to talk a little bit more about what um, was just discussed with Joanne because it it actually impacts more than our school. It impacts our town because the town now COVID. Who knows? We won't be using it with COVID, but in a normal situation, our town uses that auditorium for a town meeting. So, are we now shutting the Rochester town off to use of that auditorium? Are we shutting the White River Valley players off from use of that auditorium. Uh, I know motion, motion uh, Amy, our motion said that we were not going to be using it for an educational purpose. So how we might negotiate with the town for town meeting. I know the town is intending to use that building for uh, the Rochester voting location for 811. I know that we've talked about letting the town use part of that building for the yeah. food shelf. The, the, it's important that we keep we keep in mind the motion that the board agreed to is is to not be using that for for a, a student educational purpose. Thank you. I just feel that the words got twisted a little bit by when that we started throwing in things like yard sales that it wouldn't be used for. So okay. I want to just clarify that it was for educational purposes. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Go ahead, Karen. Yeah. Thank you, Karen Rubin from Stockbridge. Um, just going back to that really quick, the cost to refire those burners to do stuff for town activities has to be considered as well. But Carl, you explained that um, we can ask questions based on the agenda items. So I actually have three questions. I will ask each of those and then yield to the answers. Um, but if you need me to re-ask them, I'm happy to. Okay. Can, you, can someone please give us an equatable figure of what 80% of the previous year's budget actually is in dollar amounts and how that might exactly um, cause a financial burden of potentially starting the new year with a scaled down budget should the budget not get passed on 811 that's question number one just question number two what are the terms of the tax anticipation loan and are those costs considered into the budget currently and if not where do those fees and those um financial um get pulled from and then my third question. Of the week. I'm sorry. I'm maybe speaking over something. I think, I think your mic is open. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. So then my third question um, is in regards to COVID-19. Is there any consideration that the board or the supervisory union is in aware of, either from the government or the state? that is going to offer financial assistance for the cost of the implementation of any COVID-19 protocols and or PPEs. 
Um, I understand that Carl, you said that some of that would come from the CARES coverage, but that's only some of it. So where is the additional funds coming from to reopen our schools in the fall, making sure that we're following all of the correct protocols um, and have the uh, appropriate amount of PPE that our students and our teachers and faculty are gonna need. And those are my three questions that I would like some answers to this evening. Thank you. Okay, um, I can answer the first one right off the bat. 87% of last year's budget equals $573,000, or $573,113 uh, is, 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 is what the 87, uh, eight, uh, is, is the amount of money. 13% of our budget equals the five, uh, equals 57, $573,000, I've been talking so much. 13% 13, 13 of our budget, the amount of money that has to be taken out of that $4.4 million is $573,113. You're taking up my time here, Carl. <laughs> so that's the, 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 that's the amount of money that would come out. Um, question three about the, about, so there's CARES money, um, which is a, a, a more general pot for the state to spend, and that's where the state is talking about maybe using some of that to offset property taxes or using some of that to expand broadband. Schools themselves got a separate uh, COVID allocation. That's uh, $31 million for the entire state, of which 90% of it goes straight to the LEAs. And I think that figure works out to somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 bucks a kid, 500 bucks a kid that's gonna to flow to us direct, that's gonna to flow to the SU directly. And at least in the conversations that were had under the previous superintendent, um, those funds were going to be used to, 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 to cover a specific, and they can only be, they cannot be used to supplant regular spending, they can only be used to cover specific COVID spending. So um, that, that would be for PPE, that would be for uh, face shields or, or plexiglass barriers, or any of the things that the COVID task force is going to is going to need is going to deem our buildings to need, and that'll be from a separate pot of money, than uh, for the most part from a separate pot of money, uh, uh, than the the monies that's in our budget for for uh, uh, regular educational expenses. And the middle question was, what are the terms of the tax anticipation loan, and are those costs already considered into our current budget? And if not, where are those fees and the interest fees that go along with that? Um, those fees are 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 considered into the budget. Um, we uh, you know we get a municipal rate from the bank and Tara shops it around. But though that interest that interest is 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 uh, built into the budget, we we know about how much we're going to borrow. We know how much about how much that's going to be. Um, so as, as far as I understand it anyways, and Tara, jump in if you're still here and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but those, those, those fees are put in. I want to say the loan is about a little under 3% or maybe a little over 3%, but it's around, it's around a 3% uh, across. So you only pay interest on the amount of money that you borrow. You have up to the full amount of the tax anticipation note to use if necessary. And in the budget, if you're looking at what was sent in the mailer, it's under 2510 fiscal services, interest on short-term debt. That takes into account any interest that may be charged on a tax anticipation note. And this is something that the districts obtain every year in order to be able to pay their bills until tax revenue and education spending fund money is available to the districts to cover those expenditures. Okay, and I thank you all for that. And I just, in closing, just really wanna say that we can't vote on a promise. We need to know what the implications financially are of either shutting that building down and having to refire it back up for community events or shutting it down for the entire uh, season is. I think it's gonna be very difficult to get a vote passed on August 11th without some kind of um, understanding of what the financial implications are. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time, Karen. Uh, Patricia Harvey, do you have any comments? Good evening, everybody. Hi. Uh, select board member for Rochester, but I do want to make it all known that I'm also a taxpayer in Stockbridge, so I'm, I've got a little special thing going on. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit about the building that's 
not mentioned, and I keep bringing it up because I'm wearing my um, there is a subdivision process that has to go on before any of those buildings can go anywhere. Um, so we need to uh, start that process. If you start that process, you've started a legal process. And that is showing a definite sign that this is going to happen. Um, since that is probably a three month process, um, perhaps just getting those wheels going would be would be sufficient to show the taxpayers and the voters that something is happening. Um, now I'm going to put my select board hat on. Um, the select board has always been all ears. We've been open. We've been listening. Um, it is true that we have not had, uh, we have not been approached as much as we would like to have been, um, but we are ready whenever. Um, we, we are not the uh, entity that's, that's holding any of this process up that does seem to be inevitable. This something here is going to happen. So um, bring it on, but bring, bring the facts, get it together, and um, speaking for the select board, um, we're ready to work with you. So let's get this done. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Um, Patty, could I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, Patty, my, my point earlier about, um, you know, needing a certain amount of money right up front to pay heating, electric, you know, to take on this building, if it, you know, uh, does, is the town going to commit to that? I mean, is that, is that part of you saying bring it on? Well, I'm saying, I'm saying that would raise tax rate, obviously, or something like that. Correct. Um, you know, we've, we've had a plan B, we can pull something out of our back pocket um, if the need arises. And so um, we are ready to take on the building in whatever building, whatever condition. Um, but that's all I'm going to be able to say. Um, you have to come to us with a proposal and we will answer you with a definitive answer. And, Thank you. And, Thank you. And then Patty, to reiterate what we had said earlier, in, in the board's mind all along, the, the select board in Rochester has always been, been part of the process. The school board just wanted to make their own decision about what the educational needs were for the children on that campus and make that decision and then you know, approach, the, uh, uh, approach the select board rather than letting the select board or a community group or whatever drive the, the school's decision. We thought that it was our job as board members to make the decision about you know educational uh, issues issues first, and then try to sort to sort other issues. Um, we have a private caller that I'm not sure if that's Orca or if that's um, uh, someone who wishes to comment. Uh, that's Orca. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ray. Um, we also have an unknown caller. Okay. Uh, it is 9.30. This has been a three-hour meeting. We have been through the uh, 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 group of uh, public comments, uh, given everybody an opportunity uh, to say something. Um, our next meeting is going to be scheduled for, look at my, find the right tab on this computer, uh, Tuesday. Carl, Carl Tuesday. sorry. Um, um did we make a final decision on whether this 10 day, 30 day, when we're doing a revote? I, don't uh, making a I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to let the community know um, when we're next going regular to, meeting. To, to have our next regular meeting in case okay. any of them wanted to drop. Um, I do think we need to, we need to decide if we are going to, we would need, if we are going to a warrant a vote for, for uh, um, August 11th, we need to do that by July 11th because it's, it's got to be longer than 30 days for that warning. Um, or we have- Carl there's, an e Carl, there's an email from Dina. You should read. That's not accurate. Okay. Um, all right. They Based on the email that I got recently, I, I do think that we, we have a different window because it's an actual revote. She was giving you information based on the idea that it's an original vote because she was working with Jihad 2 this morning. But uh, we also, we haven't made a full decision whether we are- uh, changing the budget, as has been suggested by some people, that whether we're taking, you know, some of this, I'm not suggesting that up or down, I'm just saying, 
it seems to me we're leaving with some indecision about what our final decision was yes. to do with the budget. Uh, I, I think we are. And what, especially after w with what Jamie just said, I think that we should, can we schedule a, uh, a, a, a very quick meeting to make this decision when we've gotten some information from Tara about what the budget would look like if we, if we said we're going to defund, we're going to defund that building uh, as a uh, uh, Keith, or I think it was Keith, um, uh, one of the Stockbridge callers suggested, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know that we can, I, I don't know that I am up for at least personally at 930 at night, wrangling no. through how those no, numbers. That's fine. Came. I, I just wanted to be clear about where we were. That's all. Right. Um, we, and, and I, I support, I support uh, uh, another meeting to clarify we, that. We meet, once we, have Thursday, more we meet for a quick conversation on Thursday about this. Cause we'd have to have, we'd have yeah. to have Christy uh, warn it tomorrow for, for, for a conversation on Thursday. And then we can, if, if Tara can give us some idea of what those numbers can look like and uh, Bonnie and Lindy can have some thoughts on what they. Carl, um, I feel like that turnaround's really tight for the business yeah. office okay. right now. Well, I, just, then, then, I, I need to, I need to just have the board be sensitive that we have still three districts without budgets that we're trying to yeah. maneuver. Okay. Um, how do you propose we get, we get, we get revised budget figures? You're, you're saying that we should, we should regroup and look at what Dina says and see if we really, I, I'm looking at, I've got a, we've got a full board on Monday, the 13th. Oh, I could, we could hold a special meeting prior to that. Um, it, it would, yeah, it would have to be, I mean, the way that Dina explained it to me, if we're changing the, if Sarah, we're changing are you still on the call? Are you reading this? Yes, I'm still here. Um, so, I mean, we can we can certainly reach out to Dina and get some answers about what our actual window to warn a revised budget amount is. And so, if it's Carl, let, I will even I'll read it to you so you know. The board is not constrained by 30 day posting issue. C16 VSA 711 E and F. The date of the informational meeting shall be at least five days after the public notice of the vote. And the vote has to be at least seven days following the public notice, which is the warning. You can set a date for August 11th, warn tomorrow, have informational meeting any date after July 13th, or could set the vote in 10 days, hold informational meeting five days from warning and vote on the 10th day. So your timing constraints are not 30 days. It's you're, you're, seven days and five days. Okay. So we could conceivably warn this three different times. We have we have we have that short of a window. We could we could have multiple votes because we only really need ten days between each of them. Correct. Okay. Um, then let's let's let's. Why, then... why don't we shoot for next Tuesday? Does that seem reasonable, Jamie and Tara, for numbers? Does that sound? Yeah, we can shoot for next Tuesday. I mean, it's just you guys are out more nights. If you want to meet Monday and Tuesday, we can do that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I was trying to I was trying to piggyback this. If I mean, if we're looking at budget numbers and adopting a warning and trying to get moved forward, I feel like we could do that in a half hour. What's uh, what's the uh, time? Sorry. What's the time of the of full board meeting? Is it next? Morning? Six. Six. Um, so what are we we're talking? Could we do a late meeting, 8.30 to 9, something like that? I hate to do it later, but, I mean, we also could do 5.30 to 6. I would prefer – I. It's, it's hard for me to do anything before before 5, before, you know, 6. So okay. I would prefer, I would prefer I would, on Monday to do it afterwards. I'd prefer to do it Tuesday <laughs> rather than that late. I mean, if, yeah. if, No, if, I hear you. I think That's I would, fine with me. I, 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 have I have no problem with Tuesday if you guys want to come out again. Let's – Tuesday, 6.30? Tuesday, 6.30. Let's have uh, Crystal warn it or Christy warn it. I will, uh, you know, I, I will uh, ask Dina why she said, you know, to, 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 to make sure that that's the case so we don't turn around on Tuesday and figure out we blew our window. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right. Uh, then I would entertain a, uh, a motion to adjourn for tonight. So moved. Seconded. <laughs> Motion is made and seconded that we adjourn. Our next meeting will be a special meeting on Tuesday, July 14th uh, at 6.30 p.m. in the Internet. 
Our next regular meeting is uh, August 7th. Is that what we said? Or 4th, August 4th. Um, is, and uh, that is it. We are- uh, can, I, can I, Carl, real quick. We're gonna discuss the warning. We're gonna approve a warning. We are, we are, we are going to, uh, yes. We are hopefully going to do that. And I'm going to need some additional guidance, exactly what you're looking for me to do for you in the budget. I mean, if we're talking about going to a vacant building, there are a whole bunch of additional costs that we're going to need to look at versus if you're just asking me to back out your gas and electric, you're still going to have some if you're bringing keeping the heat at 55. So you need to give me more guidance as to what you're looking for. We can't just back it out because who's going who's to pay for the oil? We can't just say when well, nobody's going to pay for it. Yeah, I mean that's true. We're we're we're. I think. So, yeah, I mean, if you guys remember you early in your conversation, I said I thought I could have a full report for you in September. <laughs> well, I know. I'm just saying. Right. Well, I mean, I, we have. This is what we have to decide and what we have to talk about. That's what I'm thinking. I'm not sure we're up to warning a budget a a, a, a meeting. We need to talk about what we've learned tonight and what we're going forward with as far as we've made the commitment to 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 turn down the heat and no educate well no educational thing in there we, what does that mean in terms of heating and costs that's what we need to figure out uh, and do we need to change the budget numbers do we believe we've done enough or do we need to actually change the numbers to make something different and we can just, I throw out we, a quick we can't do that now that's can that's I throw out a quick question is the board feel I'm as your superintendent, I am not feeling unbelievable pressure to have an approved budget by August 11th. If the board's feeling like you need to do that, then we will try to get you the information you need. But we can operate schools and open either way. I, I just, I don't know That's if you guys question. are feeling an urgency that I'm saying, I would rather we be thoughtful. We have a, a well-planned budget that we have dug into the numbers and then we can say this is a budget that supports this concept. Cool. I mean, um, but if you guys are feeling like you need to to move to get with the primary date, I mean, I just I can't tell you that we're going to have that level of detail in it. I would rather. I think. I think the more. I think prepare, preparation is a good thing. Um, I just, you know, we got to keep. We do need to keep moving and keep information flowing. So um, I don't know, Carl. What do you think? Um, I, I, I agree. Oh, go ahead, I'm, Amy. No, sorry, Amy, you too. I can see you. I, I think, I think my, my opinion would be that we would meet on the 14th and just have a further discussion about what we have learned tonight and then discuss how we're going to try to go forward to address what people have are, have concerns about. And, and but I, I agree that uh, we don't need to be rushing uh, getting a budget passed right this second. I, we do need to be thoughtful and and, and move forward, though. Oh, um, yeah. If our if our superintendent is supporting that, I, I I would go with that. So let's meet on the 14th and just and get through what we what we what we learned tonight, and let's let it all sit, and and we'll come back with some fresher head. Yeah, I think I think let's not let's not decide that we are we are definitely not warning a budget. Let's not decide that we definitely are warning a budget. Let's be prepared. Let's let's be prepared to 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 do that. As far as I think a couple things to remember about budgets. Budgets are predictions. They are not promises. I mean they 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 we're, we're we're trying to do the best job we can, but if we only budget, you know, a, a thousand gallons of fuel to pull to, just to pull a number out of the air. And we have a really cool winter and a really cold winter and we run through that thousand gallons by the end of February, we don't get to tell the families, oh, well, we're sorry. You know, we don't have any more. We only budgeted for a thousand gallons. We're not, you know, we run a deficit because we say we underestimated our heat and we, 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 we address that issue uh, and we, we compensate for that in the, in, in the, in the previous, in, in the next year's budget cycle. We, we generally aim to have a bit of a surplus so that we can, you know, so that we're always returning some money to the taxpayers and we're never, ever trying to go to them with a deficit. But, you know, we're trying to give them, give them our best numbers. I think the important thing to think about in terms of revising the budget numbers is not that we're going to get a, a really detailed deep dive 
it's that um, what I heard, at least from, from, I think it was Keith, from the gentleman that brought that up, um, was that they wanted the board, they, they wanted to see the board. His thought was if the board reduced the numbers, it showed the board had skin in the game. Um, and so that I think is, I, I think it's less about, you know, bringing, bringing in a budget where we've done all these, all this analysis to figure out really what, you know, what we can literally cut out of the heat budget and not cut out of the heat budget. I think it's, I think what they're looking for is symbolic. We we're going to try to get, get by with, with the, you know, this amount less money because this is what we put in the report. It would cost to operate that building. So I think well, that's, that, that, that I think is, is where we're coming from, in, uh, at least in terms of when, when I'm hearing the pushback against, well, we wouldn't have the detailed information. I don't think they're asking us, especially if we're building a budget by the 14th, they're asking us to make, it, to, to, to make a, token, a token budget reduction to show well, that we take it seriously. What, yeah, let's, let's, I, let's, we have a motion to adjourn. I think we, we know we have a meeting next Tuesday. We know what we want to talk about. We want to, it's sort of follow up follow up to the vote, follow up to the building discussion and potential uh, uh, budget bulletin. Is that a good agenda? Sure. I think I, I've got my march. I think I understand where you want us to go. This, that's great. perfect. Great. Okay, great. Uh, all Finish right, then the uh, let's adjourn everybody. Great, good night. Good Thank night. you all. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you.